Yo. Hello. Yo, what up, dude? Hold on. Uh, not much. Not much. I'm just chilling. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I read a little bit of your notes with uh, uh, what, what you sent me, and just to clarify, are you currently in like plat one right now? Uh, yeah, actually, I just did my placement match before this, and I'm in plat one right now. Okay, yeah, sick, nice, dude. Uh, so my general opinion, um, of just just to throw it out there really quick, of what plat one is lacking to advance and consistently stay in like diamond league is just your raw fundamental gameplay of your macro li like literally um so that's gonna definitely be something we're gonna talk about and i'm gonna t i'm not just gonna be like macro more and that's all we're gonna say I'm, I'm definitely gonna point out things in your build that i see that i need to improvement in ways that you can um like take time to or think about like oh yeah shit, i need to be doing that while i'm doing this or this is a priority so we'll, we'll definitely talk about things like that. Uh, it's really, really important. It's like never gonna go away for you for like as you go further forward. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just mix it into whatever styles that you wanna play. And we'll we can talk about some easy to ways to handle things that you said you're struggling with uh, in, the, in the little email message thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. uh, anyways, just to make it easy peasy, do you have uh, a replay on hand you wanna take a look at or do you wanna do something more uh live uh um i actually sorry um i actually do have a replay sure um i've got two but one particular i want to look at okay uh so here's the easiest way we can do this and also don't ever worry if you interrupt me i encourage you to do it because i want you to this is like your co your coaching lesson so i want you to make sure like whenever you want to say something you say something so you're not just like i'll wait for him to finish and then you're like oh fuck i forgot i was gonna say oh no <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, you, don't worry. I'm totally chill if you interrupt me. It doesn't matter. Uh, cool. uh, then I guess just send me the email on Discord. You can just drag, the re like find the replay in your folder, drop it in Discord, and then what I can do for you is I can watch it and I can share my screen so you can actually see what I'm looking at while I explain stuff. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, we got a Baja Blaster out. What the fuck? Ugh. <laughs> okay, I got you. And then um, now I'm going to share the screen. And you should see my StarCraft like lobby or like main menu area. Um, There it is, yep. And then the replay should be loading right now, and we should be good to go. All right, so you are the, which one? Dimension or Zebula? Yeah. Here's Dimension. Uh, Dimension's my opponent. Just he's just oh, okay. guy on the ladder. Okay, cool. Uh, oh yeah, you're with the platinum player. I've kind of figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, all right, let's see what you're doing. Let's see how you're going. I'm gonna actually we'll, we'll come back to the start of this in just a second I want to get a general sense of like what your build looks like just really fast and see how you're trying to play it out just so I can like not critique everything you're doing before you do it for a reason okay so shoot ooh, ooh. Complete. Right, you're going for ravens and tanks. Is this the build you talked about, where like you're doing your th your thermals build? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so I just want to throw it out there and say that I am not. Uh, I didn't. I haven't. I, I, don't, I haven't like researched his build like that you're doing <laughs> uh, to see exact timers on things like that. So it's just gonna be me kind of critiquing what you're doing. Um. Uh, throughout the build here and if you're doing something that looks like it's not efficient I'll explain why and how you could fix that but because uh, I don't know if you're exactly copying the build like one-to-one -one uh, for what you're looking for here but I will say just in general if you ever do copy a pro player's build it even masters players or like GM players can struggle to do it it just it sometimes will make the game harder and straight up 
I would say if you're doing a build that is it's an opening with Reaper Hellion and to you're going into tank Raven now this build is a bit more of a micromanagement build this build requires you to do things and not be passive for it to be effective which is only going to make the game feel harder uh it's like it's builds like this like so let me let me say it like this uh like again we can keep going with this build i can keep help I, like this is why i was saying like the, the two things i offered you where it's like you can do the fun way or you can do the efficient way this is definitely not efficient for you this is more fun for you because taking a pro build and trying to do a pro build is definitely fun it's a fun way to play the game and you're like oh i wonder if i could do his build like like he does and see if i can move with it um but it, what, what pro builds usually are is they focus on disrupting their opponent's build the most. Like, that's it's more of the focus is on disrupting their opponent. That's what their gameplay is. And the reason why they can do that effectively is because they don't have to worry about the fact that if they invest their attention on disrupting their opponent, their own personal build is still stays the same. They can handle their own personal macro and, and like, upkeep of whatever they're doing in development while disrupting their opponent and they have the, the APM and like the multitasking to do that. But in general, when you get lower level players, what happens when they try to focus on builds that disrupt their opponent is they come back to their build and they're like, fuck, why do I have 2000 minerals right now? Oh shit, like I, I just haven't been doing my build while I'm focusing so hard on ruining his. Yeah. So it's, it's something that will always happen to you. And there's no way to fix that other than just getting literally better at the game. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. Uh, like it's because it requires you to be like really fast. Uh, and yeah, it, no, that makes sense. Yeah, it, re it also requires you to not have to think about shit and just to do shit really fast. Okay, so I have a, I have a general sense of what you're going for here. Um, so we can go ahead and back it up now, and we can like go and look at like your opener now for real. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see if your build looks efficient. Okay, so, so far, the best thing you could do for yourself right now at the stage of the game when you're not really doing much, you're kind of just chilling, would definitely be stacking your close patches, which you already have done, uh, which is great. I love that you're, you have, like, all of your close patches already stacked, and you're, you still have a couple patches that need work. Um, so, yeah, that's, the fact that you did that initially, I like that a lot. Uh, your barracks and gas... I feel like your gas could have gone down maybe slightly faster. Let's see. I want to see when you take it exactly. So you take your barracks. You have an SCV in production right here. And you could be taking your gas right... Like you could be sending an SCV to the gas like right now. Because you're going to generate enough to get 75 like to build the gas right when you get there. Uh, so your gas could be started by like 43. Like right now your gas could be started. But your gas does okay. actually start... At 46. It's not that big of a deal. Again, it's, it's not like, oh my god, that's why you lost right there. But it's just, like, it's always, these things do add up. And, lo like, players that are in plat and players that are in gold and stuff like this, this is why, like, the more that this kind of shit adds up is why your build feels like it will fall behind for no reason. So, generally speaking, if you, uh, if you're, if you know, you like, a builder you're going for, try to always, uh, maximize your resources by calculating like trying to estimate how many resources you're going to generate you think by the time like you're going to have to walk the distance from point a to point b so that when you get there what you what you have is going to add up in total to like be able to afford the building you're going to make um yeah. obviously the only time you wouldn't want to do that is if like it's if it's a tech structure delay so like if you're waiting for your depot to be done to make your barracks that's totally fine to have the depot guy make the barracks because you can't even make a barracks anyways but you're like once you have barracks stack unlocked like the last thing you'd want to do is if you, let's say you wanted to make a second barracks is wait until you have like 210 minerals to make your barracks when you could have sent an SCV off the mineral line at like 125 and then as it runs over here you generate 25 more minerals and you make it right away and, and which would be like again like six or seven seconds faster stuff like that so that's something you should always be thinking about uh if you have the tech to make it try to calculate run distance while you go there to set it up Makes sense. Alright, and then you are scouting. I love it. Saturating your gas quickly. Now your second gas. Uh, I'm not opposed to your second gas. Or yeah, no, your second gas is fine. You're doing the fast factory. You're fine. You're fine. 
That's why I wanted to look at it before, because I was like, this is really shitty for a command center, but you go you go factory before CC, <laughs> which is fine. Okay, you make your factory immediately. That was good. The way you made your factory was great. Uh, you didn't really delay that shit very long. You made it like on point. You're scouting into his base. You get blocked in as well, which is fine. Uh, the scout is going to be... You've already scouted what you need to scout, but I mean, you can't really help the fact that he's going to wall you in now. But the fact that like, you should not be seeing another gas here. You should, it's already confirmed that you shouldn't see one. And if you do, it's not really efficient by the other guy because you opened up with a CC. So he can't really afford a second gas right now. It's way too early. So as you see, he doesn't have one yet. He could start one soon, but there's no way he's going to have double gas like you do. Because if you have double gas, you don't have 400 minerals sitting there ready to go for a CC. So you already know he's single gas opening by seeing that. Uh, which is just, a, it's, you know detail of investment of your like comparing your build to their build kind of a thing where you're like well i can't afford that why can he afford that ah he must not have fucking gone crazy in the gas like i did so the differences of your build right now and th this is where like like a build like the U thermal build would it if you see this if you're like okay i double gas open and he single gas opens the difference is i have faster tech he has faster economy how does that balance out going forward into this game now you have to do damage for the, your build to be effective now. If you don't do damage, you're just behind. Your build is literally just going to be at a position that is not as advantageous as his is. Because this, his, his position is more advantageous for defensive play. Command center upgrade complete. So if I can ask, um, if I send the SCV over and I see that natural down, is it just safe to say, okay, I'll just pull back like there's nothing that's really a threat to me at this point? Sorry, uh, my sound was fucking up there. Can you say that again? <laughs> I was like, what the oh, fuck's yeah, going no. on? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. So, if the S so I send my SCV, I usually send it on 17. If I were to spot that natural that's gone down at this point, would it just be advantageous for me to say, okay, that's enough, let me pull back, I don't need to run around his main? Uh, no, you, you can. It's fine. I, I don't mind that you did. Uh, like, losing this SCV, is, it's, it's somewhat acceptable uh, for the sake of getting a scout. I would say this does tell you a lot of information that if you wanted to turn around and go home, you totally could, and that would be fine. But if you want to just like really, really confirm, uh, like you know, like what add-on is he putting on the barracks? Uh, does he have a barracks like right here, right now? Or because I don't know, some people can do some weird fucking shit sometimes. Like for instance, what if you saw this and you went home? And what I'm about to say would happen like maybe one out of like 100 games. Like no one's ever really gonna do this. But what if you scouted the guy and you were like, okay, CC, let's turn around and go home. And then what if there was another command center like right there, like in his doorway? And he like doesn't even have a barracks. And he's like, I'm going to go triple CC, no racks. And it's like, what the fuck is that? Like that is so greedy and I could easily kill it with like, you know, my, my units or whatever. I would, I would say this is probably the best way to say this. If you're going to do a Reaper follow-up to your initial scout... Seeing the command center and then piecing out would totally be fine because your Reaper should confirm another scout. But if you're okay. actually going to skip Reaper, if you have a build that like just does not make a Reaper, and your your SCV scout's the only way you're going to see their base for like, let's say, the next like two minutes of the game or three minutes of the game, then definitely go deeper and like confirm shit with your SCV. Okay. So yeah, that'd be fine. Because your Reaper is going to be coming, like, your Reaper is already on its way. And if, if your SCV scouted the the command center and then left, your SCV would probably be passing, like, this on Nagatara right now, coming home at the moment. And your Reaper would be, like, high five. And I'm like, I right, see you, man. I'm going over there now. And you wouldn't really have a lot of dead time where you're not seeing stuff. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then your SCV dies, and you see that he's making marines, which is totally fine. You're trying to poke him with the Reaper, but now this is the this is the thing, right? When you poke, yeah. when you poke, this is why it's you're disrupting. You, this is the example of disrupting his build, right? But if we look back here at your last SCV, like your commander actually wasn't making SCVs there either for a second. Uh, commander is done like right now. And you're missing, you missed probably like three seconds there of no SCV from like 153 to 156. That's a big deal. You had the money for it. You're just kind of running around his base, I would assume, with your SCV, trying to scout shit. So 
one thing, that, now this is something you need to be doing. This is something that every, like if you were to ask Euthermal, hey Euthermal, do you do this? A hundred percent, he would say yes. And every other Masters Plus player out there would say yes as well. You would say, hey Euthermal, do you use your production groups while looking at your units and, and the, your opponent's base? And they would say, yes, I do. And if you were to ask them, how often do you do that? They would say probably like every couple seconds. Like they would, there, there is a, like, you have to constantly micromanage your production buildings, your like barracks, your command center. Obviously, if you have internal timers that are like really solid and you know how long it takes to make an SCV, which is 12 seconds, and you know how long it takes to make a, a Reaper or a Marine, and you just have these internalized timers for yourself, it, you're going to have these like, you're not going to have to do it every like three seconds or two seconds because you're going to know, okay, yeah, I made the Marine seven seconds ago. He's not going to be done yet. It doesn't take seven seconds to make a Marine. It takes 18 seconds to make a Marine. So once you get really good, you're going to know these things like really well. But like it just it, like off the top of your, like you're, you're going to feel it essentially with experience. But for now, when you're doing this kind of shit like this, you need to like check and monitor and develop that process to actually learn that kind of a like internalized feeling for yourself to go. Yep. No, I know we're good on SCVs. I know we're good on Marines because the one thing you cannot do is you can't let your buildings go idle. You just can't do that. Because if you do, every time you do that, you're falling further and further and further behind every time it happens. And like right there, we just saw for no reason, you're now three seconds behind on making SCVs. And then look at your Reaper. Does your Reaper spawn? And your Reaper spawns. And now for the next however long, we'll see how long it takes for you to make another Reaper. Oh, you, okay. That was instantly. That was perfect. So that was really good. That one was super good. That's exactly how it should be all the time. As or as close to that as you can get, right? And then, you, but you do it again with the SCV right now again, though. That's why we went back and watched this for a second. So your SCV finishes at 208. So you just, like we just saw a second ago, you missed three seconds on making SCVs, which means every SCV this command center makes is gonna be three seconds behind now. And now from 208 until 213, which is five seconds, you did not make an SCV again. So now in combined, the three seconds from before and now the five seconds that just happened, you're now eight seconds behind on making SCVs, which is almost an entire SCV itself. So now if your opponent hasn't done that and you have done that, let's say the, let's say your opponent was macroing flawlessly, he would in a second here be almost one SCV ahead of you, like consistently. You'll, you'll be, he'll go to 21 and then eight seconds later, you'll go to 21 and then four seconds after that, he'll go to 22 and then eight seconds later, you'll go to 22. Like, it, you'll just be, and then if you do it again, you'll actually maybe be like a full SCV behind, and then two SCVs behind, and then three SCVs behind, if it keeps happening. Because, uh, that's, this is just what more elaborate builds will do to you, because they require more of your attention. So you have to, you have to make sure that no matter how elaborate the build is aggressively, you're not sacrificing macro mechanics to execute the build. Because then the build never works properly in the first place. Okay. Okay, so we'll come back to your build in a second here, around like 220, and we'll watch your scout. I want to see what you do with your Reaper and stuff. So your SCV dies, which is totally fine. There's nothing you really could have done there with that. And you're, you're harassing with the Reaper. And then you get out. So that Reaper, I would say, if we're going to make a Reaper, that Reaper could have definitely done a little bit more than it did right there. Um, the reason why I say that... Is, and now, I'm not telling you to only tunnel vision and focus fire, or focus on the Reaper, which is kind of what would happen in Platinum League, right? But, it's, so we'll talk again about your macro in a second. But if we're talking about micro of the Reaper, if we go back to when you entered his base and you're, stuck, you're hitting an SCV, and you know that your SCV just died down here, you can assume the Marines are either going to come from right here, or they're going to come from, like, right here. They're going to they're gonna come up this way somewhere around the CC from the side of the barracks, and they're going to chase your Reaper. And there is an exit there in his base, and there is an exit uh, there in his base, and there is an exit there in his base. So you have three ways to get out. So what you can do, if you see the Marines coming like this, right here, you could theoretically uh, like keep shooting SCVs. This one's kind of far back now. He microed it back, so you should not chase that through the Marines, probably. But you could like back up and shoot this SCV a couple more times, because the Marines are running like way up here. And then as they run up here, you could actually run your Reaper like this. And then shoot SCVs right here. And then he's probably going to come back down. 
and then you can run back this way again, and then leave. And you might kill an SCV, and you'll do more damage to more SCVs. Like, just straight up making a unit that's aggressive and needs... Because, again, the, making builds that slow you down economically, right? He's got a natural that's almost done, and you haven't even started yours. And the trade-off is you have more aggression. You need to maximize your aggression to make... The, the more you maximize it, the more it makes this build make sense. But if you just passively go, oh, okay, I'm just going to peace out now, it doesn't really justify that doing this build is worth it as much. So, okay. or go ahead. Sorry, if you're going to say something. Oh, I, I was going to say, um, so I, I do have a nasty habit of tunnel visioning, too, tunnel visioning too much onto it. And then, I mean, I see right now I'm floating 560 minerals, which is already exactly. back Exactly, yep. So my goal, my goal was to just kind of do a little bit, kind of distract him, and I was just going to get out and then go back to my economy because I knew I was letting it slack. So... Um, that's but, a, yeah. we'll come back to that in a second. That's why we were saying at like two twenty, we'll come back and talk about your economy right before this happens. Because what you shouldn't be doing, like that's why I said uh, one of the things I prefaced with was every couple seconds you should be micromanaging your buildings, like making SCVs, making Marines, making whatever what you're gonna make. Uh, that needs to be happening, and then your Reaper, because you don't have to look at that to micromanage your Reaper. Like if you're microing your right. Reaper and then you're macroing back back at home, you can do this without looking at your base. So now, if we're going to talk about your macro with your attack, right before your Reaper goes in, um, speed it up to like as you're crossing the map. So this is right after we saw your SCV kind of lack for a second here. This is like when the five seconds happened that your SCV was missing. So we're back to this. Now, your Reaper is crossing the map right now, and you're making SCVs. Your Reaper, if we're looking at the mini map here, your Reaper is jumping into his base right now. Now you queued up an SC extra SCV. Good job. Your star or your, uh, your your factory is just about done, and you are, uh, which means you're ready to make a starport um, stuff like here pretty soon and stuff like that. But if you take a second to like, so when you're about to enter someone's base like this, one of the first things you should look at is you should look at your base and ask yourself, am I ready? So okay, let, me, let me say it like I don't want to. Uh, let me say it like this. This will make this way easier to understand. There are two stages of multitasking. There are two of them. The first one is really, really, really easy macro multitasking with really, really, really heavy emphasis on micro. So if it's like if you think about like a yin yang, okay, it's never like fifty fifty. It's either like all on the black side or all on the white side. It's like ninety ten on either side. So it's, it's like you have heavy, heavy, heavy macro multitasking, or you have heavy, heavy, heavy micro multitasking. And the, the, what you need to do there is every single time before you harass somebody's base, you need to do the heavy, heavy, heavy macro multitasking first. And how to describe what that means is you need to set your base up so that you're ready to not look at it for the next 20 seconds. And how would you do that right now if we were going to talk about your base for a second here? I would say you need to do three things. First thing you need to do, you need to fucking expand. Second thing you need to do, you need to make a starport. Third thing you need to do, you need to make a supply depot because you're going to supply block. Uh, like, over time throughout this attack. Because you're going to be making uh, re uh, Hellions now. You're going to be making Marines out of a reactor. And you're still making SCVs. So now instead of making one supply per tick... You're making five supply, per, or uh, sorry, four. No, it is five. What am I talking about? You have two supply to the factory, two supply to the barracks, one supply to the command center. So it's going to go a lot faster now. Suddenly your supply is going to start like inflating really quickly. So you definitely need to get that depot going down soon too. So what you could do here is you could have your Reaper like kind of chill here for just a second. Get your command center going, get your starport going, get your depot going, and then... Shift gears from the heavy, heavy, heavy macro multitasking to now the heavy micro multitasking. And what that means is you take the Reaper. You're looking at the Reaper. Your camera never leaves this area. You jump in the base. You go make SCV as your Reaper is right here. You go make Marine as SCV is right here. You go make a Hellion as a Reaper is right there. You just keep making your units for the next 20 seconds while you go around his base and be fucking annoying. And then as soon as you go, okay, I've done what I need to do. And if I go any longer, it's going to die. It's like a judgment call there where you're like, nah, I feel like I need to get out now. You leave the base. And as you leave the base, 
there is nothing you can do, and like in this territory anymore, because you've told your reaper to leave, and maybe it's also like almost dead, or something like that. Um, so then you can uh, like right click him out of there, like right click him over to here. So he's just gonna do his thing, and that's just what's gonna happen. And while that's happening, you can go right back into heavy, heavy multitasking of macro, where you're you have now told your micro unit to move out of the base, but you're no longer looking here. You're now looking back here, and maybe you're setting up another depot. Maybe you're setting up your add-on on your starport if that's done by now, or you're, uh, you know, con you're just setting more of your build-up. You're maybe you, if you wanted to, you could. That's when you could do like an add-on swap. If you're not going to add-on swap, that's totally fine. That's when you could add another add-on. Just do some macro multitasking. Make sure you again. All you got to do is, for the next stage of your build, you go. What do I need to set up right now? What can I set up? for the next interval of time here for me then to take my, if I want to, to take my Reaper and now maybe poke the other side of his base because maybe you kill an SCV building a command center and you can delay the command center and kill an isolated SCV, stuff like that. Like you wanna, you wanna bounce around his base, but at the same time, you need to, you need to justify when you're doing either priority. The priority when you attack somebody has to be your unit because I would never tell you, yeah, go attack SCVs and then go back and, and just build units or like build buildings. Because if you do that, you're going to be like, I have no idea what's going on with that Reaper right now. Uh, oh, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, so he just died. Okay. I, I wasn't watching him. Obviously, that's not what you want to do there. But also, you don't want to prioritize, let's go attack stuff and then not continue my build. So the, again, the way you do that, you do setup first and then you go attack while you do minor efficiency with macro, maintenance of macro while you focus on this. So you're still building units, you're just not doing things that require you to require your camera to be here. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and that you have to do that if you play aggressive builds. Like it's just, okay. there's no build that does not do that. Every build does that. And every pro gamer does that. And the thing about the thing that's different from like like you thermal doing this build for you and someone going, oh, you thermals build, sick, I'm going to copy that, is he is super fucking efficient at knowing what his build is and how it lines up versus every build opponents can do. Because not everyone's going to do this build, right? Someone might, someone else might do the same exact build you're doing, and suddenly your intervals might change. Where, like, um, you're, the way you want to, like, attack somebody and set your base up and then attack someone again and move around their base and set something up again, it might change a little bit here and there, based on how you want to react to their build. And he's someone like that that's like a pro is going to be really good at always having good judgment as to when to focus on heavy on the heavier on the macro side and when to focus heavier on the micro side. But he's always doing a form of macro the entire time. It never stops. So don't don't ever think that it's like now I micro, now I macro. Now I micro, it's both the whole time. It's just is there more emphasis on one or the other at that point in time? Gotcha. That's actually something that I believe could have been a game changer is I actually forget to build the supply depot, block myself, and the the attack hits far later than it's designed to, and there's a tank out, and I have to retreat. But we'll get to that, obviously. As oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, that that's that's what happens, right? If you if you actually, like, everything matters. Like, all these, like, that's what I was saying, like, the little seconds of, like, three seconds off the SCV, now five seconds off the SCV. That's actually dramatically huge, and like depots supply blocking you, and it's gonna that block everything. It's gonna block your units and your SCVs, uh, things like that that slow you down. They make your window of timing go. Okay, let's just let's hypothetically say you're doing a seven minute timing. Now suddenly it's seven twenty two. Now it's seven forty five. Now it's eight fifteen. Now it's nine minutes and two seconds. Now it's ten oh four, and you're like doing a ten oh four timing when it should have happened at seven minutes. And you're like, ah, oh, okay, hopefully it still works. And in reality, if your opponent's actually good at the game, it will never work. Because the build's not designed for, like, a weak-ass 10-minute timing. It's designed for a 7-minute power hit. Like, that's, like, the timing attack. So you have to be able to keep up with what's supposed to be happening. Which is, that's why aggressive builds are way harder to do than uh, just, like, defensive macro builds. Because then if you do a defensive macro build, you're just kind of just building units. And you're, all your focus is on macro, and you're... You're getting ahead if your opponent isn't doing damage to you because you're just sitting there defending. Okay. So yeah, like right here, 
I want to I want to see exactly when you build the uh, command center. So this is when your Reaper goes into the base, right? And you have 400 minerals in the bank. Your reactor is done. You do make more Reapers pretty fast. You did a good job. You're doing a not bad job with like the barracks management. You do make your command center, but that's one thing there too, though. That's uh, So what happened was you said from the mineral line, okay, make a command center. And you made it at like maybe 480 minerals after you made the Hellion and Reaper. Uh, when in reality, if you would have walked the SCV off of the mineral line at like maybe like 300 minerals, and then add, because you're going to be collecting minerals pretty fast now with a fully saturated mineral line and the fact that you also have a mule. Uh, if you took them off like at 300 and then you made two, re two Reapers and a Hellion and then your minerals went from 300 down to 100, but you're gathering minerals the whole time. And then as your SCV gets here, you're back up to like 400 again. And then you instantly throw this down. You could have, like, if we look at the time here, you could have theoretically made that command center uh, like even before this, like 238. Like right now. You have a, re a Hellion started. You have two Reapers started. You have an SCV in production. You could make the command center right now. But that would that would be assuming you pulled the SCV. Like, and, and you calculate that you just thought to yourself, well, I'm making minerals pretty fast. I'm just going to send it up there before I have it because I know by the time I get there, I'm going to have it. Like, I'm going to send it there like maybe 150 to like 200 minerals before I need it. Or something like that. Or 250. Because you're going to make you're going to be making money really fucking fast now. Uh, your mineral income per minute is over a thousand. Um, so you're definitely making money quick. And so 238 is when your command center could have gone down and you don't actually make it. And this doesn't count as making it yet. Yeah. You don't actually make it until 249. So you're 11 seconds late on the command center. Uh, which it's again, not the, that one thing is not the end of the world. But if you add it up with everything that happens, it starts adding up to a lot of time that's missing. Gotcha. Ready to raise some hell. SCV ready. Yeah, now the supply block is gonna happen here. Yeah. The Grim Reaper has arrived. SCV ready. <laughs> Then you make a tech lab and a tech lab to go into tanks and ravens. SCB ready. Also, there's uh, two ways you want to mine minerals, okay? I would say don't ever long distance mine. So you get 100% efficiency on your workers if you have two per patch, okay? They get like perfect efficiency as long as there are two per patch. Sometimes the AI, even though you only it says you have 16 out of 16, Sometimes the AI will spread workers in a way where it has three on one patch and one on another patch. So it uh, optimally spreads it. But even if you have three workers per patch, it's still more efficient than long distance mining. So uh, like even though the, like these three SCVs are long distance mining and you're actually missing three on this mineral line, that means that you, you, these would be getting way better efficiency on this mineral line. But even so, the thing I'm trying to say is this is worth it to oversaturate this base up until 24 out of 16 before you want a long distance mine. Because okay. any any SCV above 25, 25 or above gets zero efficiency. It literally does add genuinely nothing. So then long distance mining is better. But if it is up to 24, all that adds up to is it's it, there's eight patches. So it, it, the AI would spread it out to three SCVs per patch. Uh, and the th like I said, the third SCV on a patch is still going to have better efficiency than long distancing. Um, yeah, like by quite a bit as well. It's not even like close. Okay. Add on complete. SCV ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right. So now you're moving out with your Reaper Hellion. Behind this, you're making. You're a tank, your marine, and soon to your raven as soon as you can afford it. Um, you got your. I'd say that's another thing too. Definitely, like, try not to do stuff like that either. Uh, this is another, like, just more stuff that's gonna slow you down. 
like you right click the SUVs on the gas. And I know you're probably doing this because you're thinking to yourself, it's better to do this now while I micro my units than it would yep. be to forget about this while I'm microing my units. But that's the, the that's the mindset that's gonna fuck you in the ass like repeatedly. That's why you need to develop the mindset of, am I ready to take this fight? And the answer to that, like the check mark there that says yes I am, is you just did a massive macro focus to go. Am I ready for the next like thirty seconds in this battle? And it, and that's when you, that would be like you tell your units go over towards his base, like a move over there, like. Don't a move into his base. A move like kind of like like here is perfect. This is a great spot. Where you chose to go is great, because you're just outside of his base. And then while your units are traveling there, that's when you take your macro focus and go. Okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and set everything up. Make sure everything's looking good. And then once you go, okay, I'm ready to take a fight. Then you then you actually initiate. But like you're doing like you move these SCVs on the gas, really early into that gas's development. <laughs> Like right, you just did it right now, and you're not even like how you're like almost halfway, pretty much halfway across the map right now. So you still have like plenty of time before you're in fighting him. Like this is you're not actually battling him right there. You know what I mean? So you still you probably yeah. aren't even going to be in his base until 11, 15 seconds from now. Uh, so that's more time you had to do a macro focus. But you are uh, okay. other than the two on gas. Hey, Strim. Uh, sorry, uh, yo, I'll, I'll play that alert later. Attila, thank you very much. I'm in the middle of a coaching lesson, and that's a super long paragraph. But thank you, man. I appreciate you. Much love. Um, but yeah, it, you're uh, you're in a situation right now, other than the two guys on gas, okay? This was not great. But other than that, your build is set up for a micro-engagement right now. You have all your add-ons set up proper on the on the bases or the the buildings you want them to be on are the ones they're attached to. There's no add-on swapping that needs to happen right now. You can't afford a third command center if you actually maintain production out of these three buildings for the time being. The only thing I would say you need to do before that you're missing here still is you need to watch your mule energy and you need to drop a fucking mule because that is also huge at developing your build. Mule like on time mules. Um, but like your supply also is probably not going to be blocking anytime soon, but I would say you're totally safe if you either do or don't want to make a depot. It really just got to think to yourself, do you, like, do you think this attack is going to take you more than like 20 seconds or 30 seconds? And if the answer is yes, you probably want to make a depot. If the answer is you're going to poke in and then poke out and it's going to be like a 10 second thing or less, then you could probably skip the depot and then come back and do it right after. But as long as you do have a good cushion, 20 supply is a nice cushion for three production facilities and two command centers. That's like not bad. Hmm. So it's just, again, it's, it's all judgment calls. This, and this is why experience is a huge thing. I'm not expecting you to remember the numbers I just said and be like, to always think 20 at four minutes and nine seconds. It has nothing to do with that. It's literally, do you think you feel good here? Like, do you think you're going to have a problem while this attack happens? And that's something that you have to figure out on your own. Uh, because it depends how you do things, like how long you're going to micro, what are you going to do is, like strategically with your micro engagement, and how long you're going to make it last. Uh, like, here's an example, okay? Let me give you an example. If you were going to just take your entire army together and attack into the natural all at once, that fight, generally speaking, is going to be faster because it's an all-or-nothing hit, and it's either going to do the damage it's going to do right away, or it's not going to do the damage and you're going to get zoned out and then they have to run away right away. One or the other is going to happen pretty fast. However, if you had two Hellions sitting right there and you had all five of your Reapers go, you know what? Let's put them in control group number three or something like that and have them jump into the main and go smack the back of the mineral line. And I'm going to drag his army up here while I'm killing SCVs in the mineral line. And then I'm going to take my two Hellions and run in here and hit the mineral line right there while he runs into the main to defend the mineral line. If that was what your strategy was going to be to attack this, you fucking need to make a depot because that's going to take a lot longer because that's going to be more spread out harass style engagement, which is going to be extended. It's not going to be all or nothing at once and then it's done. So those are the things that you got to understand with judgment calls to be like, is this going to be enough time for me or not? And that's, I guess that's, it's, that's where like experience comes in because not everyone has the same kind of style as a player as to how they like to attack their opponent. 
I didn't uh, even think about the split like that. That's genius. <laughs> yeah, like you, you could do so um, <laughs> many. There's always options, right? And that also, the more you think about options like that, the more it makes you an unpredictable player. So you don't always have to be like uh, like a robot doing like the same sequence repeatedly, and everyone's like, I know exactly what this guy does. Uh, so, and, but yeah, they, you, you definitely would want to make a depot if the Reapers went in the back, for sure, because then it would just be like a super long, like 30, 40 second fight that's about to happen. Because uh, there's a lot of travel time then that's going to be happening too, because he's going to be running up and down his base. Uh, okay. So yeah, um, or good, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I um, you touched on it. I just have a question. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, but I generally try to stick, and maybe it's not good. Maybe it is, but I usually try to stick around, trying to drop a third CC around 4:30. Um, yeah. The problem that I'm noticing that I think I'm running into is I I'm trying to keep my production going between these three, well, five buildings. Um, and I find myself not having enough money for that time. So is it situation <clears throat> when I poke with what attack I'm doing right now, if I poke it in the front of his base and it looks pretty passive, is it safe for me to skip the unit um, production in lieu of saving for the command center? Is it just kind of situational? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, no, I would say, so here's a good way to gauge that. You don't even have to look at what he has in terms of army. You could do that decision-making in terms of what he has economically. And I would say if you really wanted to skip units, just like a, for, a, for a second, to get your third command center down faster. Like, if, for instance, if you wanted to go barracks, factory, command center, starport, you could have totally done that because he went command center opener. He doesn't have a tech rush. There's not going to be anything that's going to be massively attacking you. And your attack right here, right now, has nothing to do with a starport. So if you delay this starport, all this does is it delays your ravens, which aren't even designed to go with your first attack. They're designed to go with your second round of units, like your transition. So okay. you're you're more than capable of delaying a transition if your opponent is not aggressive. Uh, and yeah, that would be a great like you would if you if you cut the cost of the starport out, you could easily afford the command center faster and then go starport. Um, that would be a great thing you could do. Also, one tip I would give you as well. I don't know if you thermal does this, but again, you gotta sometimes think about the game in a sense that if you're not you thermal himself, or if you, you're you're not a pro gamer essentially, you want to make your life a little easier sometimes because you're not actually at the level of like knowing everything about the game all the time. One thing I think you should do to alter your build to make your life easier: open up with a cyclone and a raven, and then go into tanks. Be oh, yeah, I'm supposed to do that. I, okay, you just pointed that out. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Because what that does is it makes like like there, so there's the no, this game particularly. There's no reason why you need a cyclone. I just want you to know that because you can if you read the build, you go okay, this guy's not tech rushing me, and he's not gonna have like a cloak banshee in my base or something like that, or like a liberator is gonna be in there super quick or something like that is not going to happen because this guy is doing an economical marine focused reactor command center expansion style build. This dude is literally basically playing like a sparta build where he's like hold the fucking hot gates right here and i'm gonna just hold my area and i'm gonna make economy like that that's what his build is 100 percent for now uh so you would easily have a lot of marines and your ravens out or whatever you'd have a lot of units by the time he would actually ever have an air unit in your base but if he was the kind of player that opened just like you did with like a double gas one 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 delayed natural having a cyclone and a raven cancels out Almost everything that can happen out of the starport, because it would be uh, easily it would kill a Viking if a Viking somehow flew in your base, which is really random. Nobody's really going to do that. It would cancel out a medevac drop because you could just lock onto the medevac, and you could even have the Raven like disable the medevac so it can't even drop units. Or you could put a turret under it, which would help DPS on the medevac and help DPS on whatever drops out of it. You could uh, kill the Liberator, lock on the Liberator, just follow it around, and it can't even siege in time to stop you. You could kill your opponent's raven if he tries to like fly in and harass you with auto turrets. You could lock onto it again, and you could once again disable it, or you could put a turret under it, and it can't do anything defensively. It just would be shut down while it dies. And you would also lock out a cloaked banshee because if he cloaks, the raven gives you detection, and you could just follow it with a lock on and kill the banshee. Like a a, 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 a cyclone's lock on is gonna do so much fucking damage. It's insane. Like, and the t especially to like one unit that it's locked onto while it's flying around your base. And it also runs faster or as fast as every single unit on this list. So it easily shuts all of them down. So every option he has for 1 1 1 would be shut down if he played it aggressively. If you use your Cyclone and Hillian together. 
Uh, or Cyclone, okay. sorry, Cyclone and Raven together. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing would be, if he was crazy and he went for a battle cruiser, you could once again have the Cyclone to help you deal with the BC. It would definitely add in a lot of damage. The Cyclone alone would probably do like 250 damage or so to that BC, which is like almost half of its health bar just by itself during the duration of like a, the lockout, the lock, uh, the anti-matrix bullshit, interference matrix ability. Because you could like, if you teleport in your base or whatever, you could just disable it and lock onto it. Meanwhile, you could grab whatever Marines you have to help support some more DPS in there. And then you could actually deal with a BC opener too. So it, it just shuts down all this variance of harass that could happen to you if you have a, a Cyclone. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so I'm gonna watch your units. I would like we so I wanna see what you do for Mike right here. I wanna see how you move your units. So you're kinda driving around. You're checking for your thirds, it looks like. So you chill for a second, you go in. Now there's a tank and a bunch of marines. Now you're definitely not gonna win that fight. You're definitely not winning that fight, obviously. Uh but here's a cool tip, okay? Maybe in the future, in TVT specifically, because there can be a tank, maybe lead with your Hellions, okay? And, like, when you go up a ramp, like, make sure the Hellions are in the front a little, just by a, don't put them really far in the front, just, like, make sure they're, like, like that, like, slightly in front of the Reaper, and you move up the ramp, and if a Hellion gets shot by a tank, maybe just immediately turn around, take the Hellions out of your group, and then jump up into his main with Reapers. Because yeah. oh. all your Reapers would be alive then still. You wouldn't have four out of five, and then one of them's also about to die. Uh, if you had five out of five green Reapers, you could actually take on these Marines a lot easier. And even if, if you don't take on the Marines, you could actually be destroying SCVs. Because eight Reapers are going to be doing uh, 40 damage a shot. Because like, it's eight times five, uh, which is you know 40 damage. And the SCVs have zero armor so they're genuinely going to take 40 damage so it's guaranteed two shots and here's the beautiful thing our grenade does five damage so what you actually could do if you micro this like a fucking boss you could run five reapers into his main and you could go okay attack an scv like attack scv attack scv attack scv attack it like one attack each time i'm not now you're platinum and i don't expect you to do this okay i'm just giving you a cool idea uh this is like super fucking it would be a lot harder to micro this if you're not like fucking really good at precision clicking with your mouse but every 0.79 seconds you could attack an scv which is the attack speed of a reaper and then you could go scv 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 throw a grenade all scvs die huh. and you could actually kill probably half his mineral line before he gets there with slow ass marines that don't even have stim back yet uh like that would that could genuinely happen and if this was someone like you thermal and he was streaming a game like this and the player, like, had an open mineral line like that, and he had all these Reapers like this, I guarantee he would fucking do something like that, where he's like, and you're just like, what the fuck? The game's over. This is, what the hell happened? What just happened? That never happens in my games. <laughs> like, that that's the kind of shit where, like, that's what I'm saying, like, builds that are aggressive, that are designed to ruin your opponent's build. Like, if your build is literally, okay, my build is all about making his build worse, which is what this build is, by the way. It's an aggressive focus build, so it's not good at sitting back defensively it's good at finding ways to do damage and if you did that and let's say you actually killed 12 scvs before your reapers died well that would mean that even though he opened up command center first now suddenly he's got 22 scvs and you have 29 so you actually have the economy lead going from here on out and then you also have the tech lead because your build was a tech opener so you have ravens already being made and he has actually he has a starport already been made too to be honest so he's not even that far behind in tech like he He's making the reactor version of it, but yeah. And he also swapped off the reactor from the barracks to the starport. You get the point, though. It's, it's fine. Like, you guys are both somewhat close in tech. Even though you did make your starport first. Uh, because you had double gas opener. So it makes sense that that would have happened. But yeah, you poke him. And then you get shot by a tank. And then you literally run away. Right now, what's happening... The way you should feel... Is you should always look at how the game developed... Okay. Always. This is this is something that I actively think about every single game I play in StarCraft 2. I never 
I never don't think about this, even though it's a double negative. I always think about it, okay? If I were to attack somebody and my build was a gas opener, so there's two there's just two kinds of openers. There's gas openers and there's mineral openers. It's it's resource priority. You did a gas priority before you did a mineral priority. The first mineral line does not count because you just start with it by default. Everybody starts with the first mineral line. Like you already have almost a fully saturated mineral line at second zero of the game. But you saturated your gases heavily before you took more minerals. <coughs> and you still don't have a lot of minerals here in the first place. You're still doing a gas priority again at this base before doing a mineral priority. That means you need to do damage unless your opponent is doing the same thing you are. But he's not. So you need to do damage. Because he expanded super fast. He did a mineral priority. So if I look at his mineral line, it's going to be a lot. Like, we don't even need to see this to know that that does not look like that. And we already knew that was the case. We should know that's the case because he opened up with an expansion. Yeah. So you're definitely behind if the game just goes on now. Like, you, this needs to... Like, so you, you just got to find a way to do damage, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Like, this going home, if, if it just leaves now, it just goes, all right, let's just play a macro game now. You're just behind. Okay. <coughs> and it logically makes sense why you're behind. Because yeah. your tech rush didn't effectively do any damage. Now, you're not dead. It's not like, oh, you lose the game now. But you're just... You're... You're going to have a harder time than you should now having a mid-game. Everything about the mid-game is now going to be more challenging than it, than it should be. And this is going to be one of those games that you're going to play now and be like, fuck, TVT is hard. But if you had a better opener, you're going to be like, wow, am I getting better at TVT? It feels easy. <laughs> like, the opener is huge. Yeah. Okay, so you're making two more racks and you're making a third CC. But you're you're still down by, like, 10 supply already. Yeah. Which is only going to get more extreme because even though you're down by 10 supply, you're down by a lot of economy. You're down by 8 SCVs. And that's a humongous deal when you think about how much percentage-wise are you down on his economy. That's actually like substantial. You're you're down by like probably 20% of his economy. So that dude is just getting a lot more potential resources than you are. Mm. And that's like constantly happening it's not even just like for a one time only it's the rest of the game that's going to be happening until you eventually catch up to him like when you guys both eventually stop making SCVs and then also he might make mistakes too and be like I forgot to make workers for two minutes people do that shit all the time in lower leagues but uh yeah, yeah. you are just definitely going to be pacing slower than him now which is it, it's, it's happening this game remember how a second ago I said you're 10 spy behind now you're 15 spy behind. It's only going to get more out of hand as time goes on because he can afford everything faster than you. Huh. Okay. Ready. Command center upgrade complete. Ready. All right, and then you're going for a bit of a push here. Now, this attack is a little scary, okay? I am very scared for you. The reason why I'm scared for you is because you don't have stim pack with this push. Yeah. And generally speaking, if you don't have stim pack with your okay, there's there's a way you need to do this. I'm going to back it up for a second here. If you do not have stim pack with your push, you do not ever want to have this army engaging like where it has to siege up as the fight is happening. What you want to do instead, because you like that's when Stim is amazing. You need Stim to like make those moments matter because uh, Marines are way more effective if you can catch tanks on Siege. And it happens on both sides. But if you're in a situation where you ever go, you know what I want to do? I want to push. And I don't have Stim at all. It's not going to be done for this fight. But I'm going to push. There's two things you need to do. Number one, you need to have a reason why you want to push. It needs to not be random. And right now, I don't feel like you have a reason. Because you're, you're pushing without knowing anything. All you know is he's got a natural that is defended by a tank from before. And clearly that happened a long time ago. So there's going to be more shit there too now. You don't actually know if he has a third base. 
So what I would say you need to do for the first part, the first thing of two steps would be use your Reapers and Hellions now, which now suck in this game at this point. They're not going to really do much anymore. Uh, they're really shitty when you go into the tank marine phase. Like these units are just going to disappear and then they're gone. Uh, these guys should be scouting. Do you have a third? Do you have a third? Because they're what they do have is they have mobility. They can literally outrun Marines and... Uh, even if you get shot by a tank, you won't die in one hit. You could get shot and then run away and then regen with a Reaper. So, uh, like, just go scout for a third and make sure that your push actually makes sense. Because your push, I would say, does not make a whole lot of sense if you're just going to push his natural. And the reason why it doesn't make sense, there's, uh, well, I, we'll get to that in a minute, okay? That's, I don't want to, uh, there's, I got to tell you the second reason. Or the second thing you want to be doing with your Reaper Hellion. We'll, we'll come back to what I was about to say in a second. But so step number one, scout for a third. A third would make sense to push if it existed right now. If this guy, and the reason why that makes sense is because if he's being greedy, it would probably work. It, it has a higher chance of being successful. So if he has a third, you could actually execute this push. Now, the way you would want to execute this push is you'd want to have a Hellion or a Reaper in front of your army. So you'd be like, okay, army's here. Hellion's there. Like, where it is now, this is fine. But notice how you walk into this. You stack up everything. And then you start going forward. So you don't really have a lot of time to react. You're giving yourself a little bit of time. It's not, it's, this is not the worst. But the second you saw this, immediately siege. And then pull these guys back to the tanks. That's what you should be doing here. You should definitely not drive into the tanks into this fight and then siege. You should always siege immediately and pull back to your tanks. Because this guy has stim, and you don't have stim. And that's uh, that's what I kind of expected, because he opened up with a marine build, and you opened up with a reaper hellion build. So he had a more of an emphasis on his bio right away. Like, he skipped the step that you did first, and then he went straight to the marine tank phase. So you drove just straight into it all. One of your ravens died doing literally nothing. He sieged before you did as well. His tanks are going to shoot you first. Surprisingly, your bio killed his bio. Uh, what did he do with his bio? <laughs> like, you actually had Hellions Reaper there, too. I guess he just didn't really have a lot. He had, like, six Marines. So he had definitely a really shitty amount of Marines. Uh, so you definitely ran them over. But... I mean, he's got some tanks now. One of your tanks is in range. Yeah, I, was, I would say this is probably the time to like, probably not continue. You did lose your Ravens. You did lose uh, a couple, like all your Reaper and Hellion. Reaper and Hellion at this point are pretty shit, like I said, so that doesn't matter. Your Ravens were really important. That sucks. Uh, and then you only lost like a, like a couple Marines. You should definitely get out though. Definitely get out. This is not the time to continue. But having a spotter would be huge for your, like I said, like, oh, he's right there. Hellion Marine, disengage back up to the tanks. You drag him to your tanks, pick off everything that chases you into your tank line, and then that's when you could unsiege and then push forward again, and you could, like, disable his tanks or drop auto turrets that would get shot by the tanks and would also shoot back. Something like that. Instead of just charging it and being like, I'm going to fucking make this work on my first attack. Because <laughs> whoever sieges first is, is going to control the area, generally speaking, unless one player has a lot more tanks than the other. Okay, so you're getting out, which is good. But, okay, now, second thing, okay? And now, now I'm going to explain what I, what I was going to... What I was going to say, is, like, during that explanation I just gave you. So, I, we talked about the idea of scouting for a third and then scouting ahead of your army to give you warning to siege your tanks. Straight up. Now, you got to think about how your build compares to his build. And this is what I want you to be aware of, Okay. You never scouted a third command center out of this guy's build, ever. And if this guy said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for one Rax into a factory, into a starport. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go Rax command center with Marines off of a reactor. And then I'm going to go factory starport. And then I'm going to make uh, six more barracks. So I'm going to have seven Rax with a factory and a starport. And I'm going to make like two medevacs. The rest Vikings and like one tech lab of Marines and six reactors of Marines. So he's going to just have a big blob of Marines 
and in tanks and, and Vikings and medevacs. If that's what he wanted to do, you pushing right now would be the worst thing in the world. Because, again, you don't know that he has a third base. You never confirmed that. And you just walked blindly on the map, kind of crossing your fingers, hoping for the best. Because the reason why that would be a problem for you is you do have a third base. So you invested into a third. And if you're investing into economy and he potentially is not, that is not the time to leave your base, leave your defensive posture, and go push because you're never going to have the bigger army. And... Gotcha. You don't know that right now, which is why that's a problem. Uh, so yeah, if this guy did do like heavy production, you would have just lost the game. You would that would have been a moment where you're like, "What the fuck? That's a huge army!" And then everything for you dies, and then he just rolls you over. Yeah. So definitely confirm third bases before you push like that. Otherwise, you should just stay defensive. And now you're taking a fourth command center. So once again, this is not the time to push. Now, your base is being a little bit exposed, okay? One thing you could do to kind of fix this for yourself a little bit would be take two Marines, one of them, like, right here, like, put it on patrol or something or whatever, just have it, like, in this area, and one Marine, like, right there. Because what I'm afraid for you right now, the way you're setting your base up, your third base is pretty well protected at the moment, but if this guy ever decided to drop your main or decided to drop your natural, you are so dead. Like, you're going to take yeah. a lot of economy damage. And again, right now, this guy clearly has a starport. We saw it. He has Vikings already. You have no idea if this guy wants to make Medivax and drop you as well. Gotcha. So, turrets or Marines, like, spread out need to be happening. That way you have some type of warning and, de and deterrent that you could, like, relocate some units to defend yourself with. Um, and, and this might be a silly question. Um... I've heard that there's, like, I've, I've watched Pig's beta GM, and I've watched yours for sure. Um, I know Pig a lot will sometimes say, like, turrets are inefficient so early into the game. Yeah. So, as of, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, you, you keep going. Yeah, it's true, though, but keep going. Yeah, so I've been trying to, prior, before I started really taking this, picking this game up again, um, I would kind of just do that. I would just kind of do safety turrets because I'm going against Terran and sure that would happen. Uh-huh. Um, is there an easy way to read when turrets are acceptable? Yes, there or is. Or not yep. an easy? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's. Uh, I would say once you have three base economy, you're not going to really feel the impact of making like four turrets. Like if you made like let's say two turrets there and there, and you made two turrets like there and there, you wouldn't even feel it. At 65 workers, uh, giving you over 2,000 minerals a minute, you're not going to feel it. Okay. Uh, if but however. The, what Pig is referencing when he says, yeah, don't make fucking turrets when the game is just starting. He's talking about, like, if your build was like this. If you were like, okay, I have a barracks, a factory, and a starport. Like, let's talk about when you poked him with your first Reaper Hellion. And you hadn't yet started your third CC yet. It wasn't even started yet. What if you made an engineering bay at, instead of making your third base? And then you made four turrets here, here. And then you made two more. Like, so you made four in total. Like, two of the four I just said. Two, two. Or, and then the two over here, right? Uh, if you make those turrets then, when this mineral line has like four SCVs on it, and then this mineral line had 13 on it, and you're not even really able to afford making your units properly with, well, while also delaying your third base, if that's when you make turrets, yeah, that's fucking awful. That's when it's like, okay, and that's what a lot of people do when they're like, they're like oh, I don't want to die to any type of air harass. I have no idea. That's when instead of making turrets then, you'd be better off making like that fucking Cyclone and Raven. Suddenly, you do what okay. those turrets did, but way better because it defends everything at a cheaper rate. I see. Okay. So, but now, uh, when you have like three base saturation, you can make a little bit of Static D, especially if you're playing turtly now, and you're taking a fourth base. Those turrets are absolutely worth it now because you're what you're doing is you're basically like you're, you're spreading yourself out a little bit more over the map now. And what that means is, like, you're no longer protecting, like, your core of your base. You're, like, exposing yourself to being stabbed in the, the fucking sides and shit. Like, yep. which is going to hurt a lot if it happens. So investing a little bit into making sure that doesn't happen is totally fine now because you're controlling more of the map. And I would say, again, that the perfect moment to know that 
is when you have three bases fully saturated with minerals, you're totally fine to throw down a couple turrets, and you're not going to even... It's not going to feel bad for you at all. Um, it's completely the opposite. It's going to feel good, because you're going to be like, oh, shit, that turret fucking destroyed a, bro a drop right there, yeah. and I actually didn't lose my SCVs. Wow, that was nice. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, and then maybe another silly question. Does that fourth base, does that fourth command center make any sense to you? Or at this point, should yeah. I be focusing more? No, that's on fine. Yeah, that's okay. good. Uh, so what this tells me with your fourth command center right now is that you want to transfer SCVs from your main to your fourth, and you also probably want to keep going above 65. Those are both good things if you do both of those things. Like, I would love it if you go to, like, 80 SCVs. And then I would, I would love it as well if you made a fifth command center the second your fourth is done. And then you, as you have money, you just keep making more barracks and continue to, and like maybe even a second factory and continue making like your marine tank medevac or whatever composition you're going to be going for constantly um, the, for the rest of the game, like for the most part of the game. That's totally fine. The worst thing in the world you can do is never take a fourth command center until you're like, you're, you're literally mining your patches out and you're like, oh shit. Well, it looks like I better kill him now because I'm running out of money. Uh, gotcha. So, yeah, this is totally fine. I'm totally... I was, like, happy watching you build this 4th CC. That was good. Definitely keep on top of, like, continuously expanding, taking more bases along the map. Especially since, like, even if you just land it and make a planetary, even if it has no SCVs at it. Like, say you took this base, and you're not ready to mine it yet. Everywhere else is efficient, and this isn't even being utilized with resource collection yet. It's still good because it gives you a scout, and it gives you a distract... Like, a decoy. It gives you... A uh, control of the map. It, it lets you know that this is area is not a, not contested. He's not here yet. And if he does show up here, this could kill like let's say like fifteen marines before it dies, or something like that. Yeah. If he decides to run into it, or it could it stall out. Like I say, he pushes the side. This could stall his push for like fifteen seconds before he kills it with tanks and then decides to go deeper in, which gives you a time to now either react to it or to counter him or something like that. Like, it's totally worth it to even just have PFs on new expansions that aren't even being used yet. But I'm not, so I'm not right. saying, though, I'm not saying take every single base at the same time, but definitely progressively yeah. take them, like, one after another. Okay. All right. Nice armory timing. That's good. <laughs> and I have a I have a tip I would give you as well. This is this is my personal opinion of TVT. I think it makes your life a lot easier. If you're not going to do a lot of drops like this, I think anywhere between two and four medevacs is all you need, and then stop. Okay, and the reason why, and then instead of making medevacs, make Vikings. And the reason why is because when you both have tanks, medevacs are not going to heal through the tank fire. They're just not. Your Marines are 100% going to die to a tank line. Medivacs will not heal through that. But what happens is, is if you have Vikings, you can actually kill his Medivacs. And if he also has Vikings, whoever has more Vikings can kill the other person's Vikings. In the fight, while you have Medivacs trying to heal Marines, like so that whoever's Vikings is at a larger number, they control the air essentially and kill everything else in the other opponent's air side. And if you win the fight by both sides losing all their Marines because all the fucking tanks killed all the Marines, you have a vision advantage now where you can actually shove your tanks forward and see in front of them, and he can't stop that unless he repeatedly scans, which is going to severely fuck his economy. So medevacs are not needed like they would be against, like, Zerg, for instance, where you need to have, like, eight of them or, like, ten of them where it's like, I got to heal through all the hydras and lings and banes and roaches or whatever. Because you're not healing through tanks. Like, tanks are going to be like, seven shots just go off. And like, a chunk of marines are literally dead. They're not even like, heal me. <laughs> They're just fucking like, splattered corpses on the ground. <laughs> They're gone. So, uh, yeah, they just they won't ever keep up with the healing on that. It's too much burst damage. Um, so, realistically, what a medevac is, all it is is it heals the survivors when the fight has come to an end or it heals stim pack damage. And it easily, like four medevacs, three medevacs, or two medevacs are going to have no problem healing that and not running out of energy 
when you have like a fight every once in a while and they just need to heal the stim damage and then it's over like it's it's yeah it's it's just because <clears throat> like all that really the minimax really do is they recover the marines with stim back to full while the fight's going on because if, if a tank shoots so like a marine just think about it like this a tank has 55 health when it has combat shield and a tank does 40 damage uh by default and i think it gains plus if i'm not wrong i can't remember exactly but i think every time a tank gets an upgrade i think it gets plus four on versus marines because it's not armored i think it gets plus four but if it like, even if it does okay that means it's going to go to 52 damage like with the fucking shot essentially so if a tank shoots at a marine that just impact it's going to get one shot either way and if a tank shoots at a marine that's full health it's going to be 10 hit points or sorry it's going to be at three hit points from dead because if, if we're we're assuming a tank has level three weapons right now uh which means like one marine shoots the, the other marine that got shot by a tank just now and it dies anyways so it's yeah the medivacs are just never going to genuinely heal through the damage of tanks plus marines slamming into each other whenever wherever the tanks are deciding to shoot at um so like yeah it's just Mathematically, it doesn't make sense to make a lot of medevacs to expect them to heal through the fight. What's really going to happen is you're going to have like eight medevacs, all full energy, flying around, being like, "There's nobody to heal. They're all dead. <laughs> we're all we're all waiting." <laughs> this is going to suck. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Ready for dust off. Ready to go. All right, so you're going for a drop in the base. This is okay. Uh, I would say though, this kind of a thing works really well if you decided it like so if you scouted and saw where his bases were okay and you were like okay i see he's got a third there and let's say he even has like a third there or whatever if you decide to drop him like this and then you also at the same time do a tank shove on the side of his command center at the same time when you drag him out of position that would be a great addition to this i feel like it would be more effective than just doing this by itself because yeah. whenever you do drops where the only thing you're attacking them with is the drop, and they're already in a defensive posture, it's probably not going to do any damage. Like, it's going to do very little. Another way to use this drop, other than saying you can set your tanks up aggressively, so, like, the aggressive option would be set up tanks aggressively while you distract them with this. Another way you could do it would be stay defensive, and when he attacks you, initiate the drop. So, while he's trying to push you with tanks, he's got marines at his mineral line, which... For him, it creates a fucking chaotic situation where it now creates an opening for you to shove him and kill him where he might not be paying attention at the exact moment he needs to because he might be trying to deal with the SUVs dying up here. Or he just goes, fuck it, I'll let the SUVs die and I'm going to focus on this. So it creates a more chaotic situation for him. But just doing this kind of randomly by itself, the chances of this actually doing damage are just super low. Gotcha. And you're landing into a tank with Marines already. And you killed zero units. And you weakened some SCVs, but you killed zero and then the medevac even died. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it wasn't really that effective. <laughs> I, reviewed this, I reviewed this replay before I sent this. We did this and I was I noticed a couple different things, but I didn't notice that I didn't get anything out of that. So that's super <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Could be used a little bit more effectively, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like getting weapon upgrades would be huge. Getting 2 2 would be huge. That's like really, really big. Definitely want to make sure you stay on top of that. Also, the like the one thing I said about the tank thing with the Marine, how the we had to heal them and stuff. I didn't account for Marine armor, but same concept though. You still, the Marines die super fast, but having armor definitely does help as well. Give you that like a little bit of an extra like one or two shots in your marine before it does die from getting splashed and shot by marines at the same time. Gotcha. So upgrades are massive in TVT. Upg upgrades for bio, no matter what, are fucking massive. Like marines are one of the biggest units in the game that have the biggest changes from their uh, upgrades. Now what you're doing right now, this is fucking not good. I <laughs> don't like the way you're setting this fight up. Okay. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. So you are chilling right now. You're getting ready to push. This is right before you pushed. You're moving out. You selected all army and you pulled all your scouts off, which it happens. Yeah. It's it's fine. It's you shouldn't do that, but it does happen. I get it. 
it, it, what, it's not the biggest thing you did that was a mistake here. The thing you did that was a mistake is you set you just literally disregarded your entire army except your marines and you went marines win everything by yourselves. That's not what you want to do. Um, the only time that would ever work is if you 100% know you have an advantage. And this is not that like your first you opened up less economical than he did and your opening did nothing. And then the only thing that's happened since then is well actually two things happened. You did an attack here again and you got zoned out by tanks. You didn't really do much. That was kind of a, like you lost to Ravens. He lost a couple of Marines. I would say overall, that was a little bit of a loss for you again. And then right. you backed off. And then you did a drop here and you lost everything and killed nothing. And that was again, a little bit of a loss for you overall in the grand scheme of things. Cause at that point you guys were both like 150 supply and you lost 10 supply for nothing, which is definitely a little bit of a loss. But like, again, it's just loss after loss after loss for you. So this is not the time to think to yourself, my Marines are just going to run them over by themselves. <laughs> like, you okay. definitely need to be more cost-efficient than that. <laughs> like, actually use your tanks and stuff. So, when you see him here, uh, you see that. You probably thought to yourself, he's unseaged. I'm going to yep. push. But here's the problem. He's out of your fucking tanks range. So, effectively, you are you don't have tanks either. Because <laughs> they're not even going to help in the fight. <laughs> so what you should do... a hundred Like, think about this. What if... You scanned right here, okay? What if you scan this area? Let's see what's here. There's nothing here, okay? So... If there's nothing there... What if you went to this area? There's not much here either. There's new a couple new units. There's one tank... And there's some new bio. And it's not even stopping there. It's rallied. So it's walking that way. Up to the right. Now, think about this for a second. What if <coughs> you took, like... Now, this is advanced, okay? This is not like... I'm not saying, oh, this is super easy to micro. But what if you grabbed, like, a chunk of your bio and maybe, like, two medevacs? So you just, like, grabbed a chunk really fast. And you hit, like, alt three. I don't know if you know what alt is, but it's, like, a steel command. Yeah, just, it, it drops it from the main army. Like yeah, my exactly. One, right? Yeah. Just, this is just a hypothetical, okay? This is just to get your brain thinking about what you can do here. Instead of looking at this situation and going, oh, he's unseaged. I see that one tank and he's unseaged. I'm going to stim that fucking down right now. You go, okay, how about I just, I've sieged first. And now if he tries to come towards me, he's going to get blasted by tanks. And these tanks are going to get a lot of fucking damage done. And what if I leave some of my units here to guard the tanks? Like, what if I leave, like, one-third of my Marines and, like, my Vikings and, like, a medevac here to stay with the tanks so I have vision of the area so I'm not being fucked over by weeds and stuff like that? And I send a big clump of bio, maybe, like, half or two-thirds of my bio, to just run at his economy right now because it's exposed. He's not here defending this. He's here, which is not defending his core base. Like, you're basically be between his economy and his army. And that is a fucking scary place for you to be for him. Because you could literally just run past him and go kill his SUVs. That's not good for him. Yeah. That, that sucks ass for him if you do that. But what you did instead is you charged him and your tanks were way out of range. Your tanks can shoot as far as there. That's like the one tank as well, by the way. The rest of your tanks can shoot like there. Like not even close. Um, so... When you, I already know you're gonna lose this fight. I, I one, almost like a hundred percent sure. Unless this guy somehow fucking like move commands into you, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're gonna lose this fight. <laughs> yeah. So what I was trying to do, and I re I remember this vividly. This game was like from like two or three days ago. But I yeah. remember I did see. I was like, I see the unsiege. I'm gonna move in, and I think I specifically stem on the tanks. But and I was trying to get in, do some damage, and then out before they sieged in hopes that his marines would pull into mine because they're already sieged. If that makes any sense. So what you should do if that was the case here, is you'd want to poke him right now, and you'd want to be running within about one second from now. Okay. It because the the amount of time it takes for a tank to siege, is not that long, and you get it, the only way you could ever realistically get in, pop a tank, and then get out if he was sieging his tanks as you were running in would be if the other tanks were not like right here but if they were like sieging like right there and there was like one tank on the low ground that was somehow like like they walked let's say this was open the rocks weren't there and like four of his tanks went up on the high ground one tank went on the low ground and you popped in popped the tank off 
while he's sieging. And then you run away because they're already kind of far away. And then you don't get shot. It's the only way that would ever happen. Because in the time it takes you to, to run one direction, either into the tanks or away from the tanks, just one direction, they're already going to be ready to take a shot. So if you run in while they're sieging and then you try to run out, you're going to get fucking blasted by a full round of tank shots. And that's not going to be worth it. Gotcha. So I, yeah, like I said, I'm going to play this right now and I fully expect you to get demolished because <laughs> you're going to be fighting <laughs> tanks and marines with just marines. And there was that full round of tank fire right there yeah. as you ran out. And he just dumped your army in the ground right there. Like you, your bio ball is now more, I would say probably like 60% of your Marines just died or like at least 50%. That's like a lot of Marines that just died for you. Yeah. And here's the problem too, right? He has a lot more Vikings. So now he has air control. You have two Vikings to his uh, eight. So you have to run away, which now gives him advantage over your tanks. Because now, like, obviously, you if you scan, you can scan to keep revealing the area. But now this guy can, can crawl into the dead zone repeatedly and keep shooting you. And if you don't have scans ready to go, your tanks will just die. But luckily for you, I mean, you have a lot of scans. This is one thing you need to do two more, though. In the development of your build, you really need to probably use your energy a little bit more efficiently on mules. This is something a lot of Terrans fuck that. up. Yeah, a lot of Terrans fuck this up. That's why I referenced it early on, too, when I said you got to drop that first mule. You yeah. need to do that a lot. You need, you, your build does rely a lot on dropping mules repeatedly for the, at least the first, like, se just think about it like this. This is actually a good number to give you. The first seven minutes of the game are mule territory. If you're not dropping mules on demand there in the first seven minutes, your build's probably getting set back. But after seven minutes, your economy is going to be pretty efficient. I'm not saying don't ever drop mules anymore from that point. But if your energy stacks up to like 150 or like 100 or whatever, it's actually way more acceptable beyond seven minutes. And the reason why seven minutes is such a good number to give you is because at seven minutes, you should genuinely be already on three bases, fully saturated and having things like your fourth base set up just like that. Like this, the, the, your economy right now looks pretty appropriate for like seven minutes to eight minutes, like somewhere in that time frame. And but right now it's, it's 1030. Uh, so like it's Europe, like I would say you're, you're like this economy, if it was actually like super efficient, this would probably be closer to eight minutes this game. And the reason why I say that is because you opened up with uh, double gas and you didn't go command center early. But if you did go like what he did, where he went like barracks command center, seven minutes, you could have an economy just like this. Seriously. Okay. Uh, like this it could definitely go faster for you. Uh, but yeah, like once you have a good economy, like like a three base saturation, fully saturated is definitely the, like that's like the magic key that unlocks a lot of shit in this game where things don't feel expensive anymore and you just start having money to throw around all over the place. Uh, and that's when like if you didn't drop mules and you save some more for scans, that would be okay. <laughs> this is dumb, and I know this is dumb. You go for a drop? Leaving your no, I'm I'm trying to stick to the side. I'm because I'm a, I'm like he thinks I'm running straight back to my base, so he's just gonna follow me into it. Uh -huh. So if I siege to the side of him, I'm gonna catch him unseaged while running. But he goes over there instead. Yeah. So one thing you could do to fix this is get out of the habit of always doing sucked army. Try to do that. Try to get in the habit of having a rally point where everything goes to, like here, was a great spot. That's a great spot to put it in your base because it's like the heart of your base. And then always grab units from the rally point and then move them in wherever you want them to go, like group one or whatever. And then tell one Marine, if you're going to focus on the left side of the map, tell one Marine to go stand right there. That way, if you're on the left side and he goes to the right side, that you get alerted way before he's here. And that way, you also don't have to blow a scan on it either, because one marine is cheaper than a scan by far. Like you, that if you if you instead of scanning, if you did a mule, you could make five marines with that mule. Uh, so, yeah, definitely want to use a marine instead. Marines are great spotters. <laughs> All right. 
<clears throat> now, one thing you, one thing you could do as well in this fight. There's, so the last fight didn't go the greatest for you, and right now you're running into a problem, and what this problem is is time is not on your side, okay? It's really not. The reason why I say time is not on your side is because when tanks are sieged up, they're gonna get great efficiency. And when Vikings are spotting for them, they're going to really get great efficiency. And you have nothing to prevent that from happening. Like, you can siege a lot of your tanks in a line that would always shoot him as he tries to engage you. And you can repeatedly scan every single 15 seconds or so. When it ends, you scan again. Just so you can't, like, so you're not losing Vikings while trying to watch him from pushing you. But you will eventually run out of scans. And then you have a problem again. Uh, and if you don't scan, this guy can slowly crawl tanks forward and push you because you can control. He again, he can control the vision with the air with a Viking, and then crawl the tanks forward and then keep controlling the area. So, what you could do right now, believe it or not, what I would say because time is not on your side, is you could actually grab your SCVs, and you could like shove into this, and you could push this, and you could break this before it becomes too big of a problem. You could do that. Because you actually have more sustain in your army. You have medevacs. You have a decent amount of tanks. You guys both, I would say, have similar numbers of tanks. And you have a lot of bio uh, to go with it, too. He has less bio and more Viking because he's got, you know, he just, he has some bio, too. But I, you definitely have more of the marine medevac side. He has more of the Viking side. You guys both have tanks. So yeah. if you just shoved in with some SCV fodder, ran his army over... Because, and the reason why this would not be that bad for you to do that right now especially is because you have a lot of command centers to recover SCVs with really fast on. And you also have a lot of energy to drop needles with to supplement the SCVs you would lose. You could do that. Uh, another thing you could do would be you could also try to like go around this and poke somewhere else and kill one of his bases. Well, try to start like base training in a way. And maybe things go in your way because maybe he gets sloppy and runs into some tanks. Because the only way you're going to win this fight, if you just don't pull SCVs and sit there and try to fight him back, is if you try to overtake his Vikings. You're not going to win this fight if you just slowly stand there and let him do this slow push. Because Tank Viking is going to kill you if you wait on it too long. Like, the probably the best thing you could do here, honestly, if you want to take, the, if you just want to not pull SCVs and you want to take the fight, would be either to grab some army and come around the back and try to flank. And spread your army out so you spread some of the splash out of the tanks. Or maybe load up like two medevacs while you engage his Vikings with your Vikings. Boost in from like the side on like two medevacs. And then like drop like carpet drop marines over the tank line. That's like the only way you're going to break this if you just don't pull ICVs. Right. Because you need to like spread out his tank fire and shove his tanks. You, like the concept is is you you have to push into him. Not th he's, He doesn't have to push into you. He's going to push into you slowly and there's no way you stop that. Yep. So, because he always has vision advantages. So it's it's a, it's a really tough position for you to be in because your composition isn't as ideal for just stalling a fight out. His is way more ideal for it. So if you just wait, you're going to die. Ready for dust off. And now the problem for you that's happening now is this position now is compromised in this area. It's now set up. And your gas is now going to die. Your mineral line is going to be fine. It's too far to shoot the mineral line, but your gas is absolutely going to die. Uh, so now, I mean, you could always take it like there and fix it somewhere else. But you need to be patient about it. And now your ramp is also going to be compromised. Because if he has a tank like right there, he can shoot that ramp no problem. So you need to probably rally point your base now to like right there. Otherwise, your shit's going to keep getting shot at as it keeps trying to come down, and it's just going to start getting real sloppy. Uh, I, like, one thing you could do as well, like I said, like, you could go for a counterattack, right? You could also go for a counter drop at the same time. You could be like, load up some, some medevacs and literally try to just go drop in the side of his mineral line and stall him out. Again, like, try to make him play sloppier. Stuff like this. This, it, this is now really... It, it, the point I'm trying to make, though, overall... It's going to be fucking difficult for you to break this because, again, his composition is just stronger in this in this scenario.
Okay, you are going for a drop. I don't think that's a bad idea. That's so sketchy. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh, your Viking flew in and died, unfortunately. So trying to push his tanks with your tanks is a bad idea. Definitely don't do that. Definitely just accept the fact that you're not pushing this back now. If you're not going to like... Like, the fact that it's already set up now, you sh that, that's no longer going to happen. It's uh, that, that part of the game is now over. So the only way you're going to win the game now, with since you're investing into a counterattack, is you're going to try to break his economy while you... St while Think of this as like... Like, it's like a plague or like... It's like poison or some shit in your base and you're going to like tourniquet it and you're going to hold it there. You're not going to try to delete it and push it back. It's just whatever he... Whatever ground he has, he keeps. And you just don't let him have any more. Ideally. But that means the only way you deal with this is by periodically scanning so that he can't keep pushing forward. Yeah. And that's that's a problem I have. I mentioned... That it's in my notes too, but I have a problem with TBT specifically because things like this happen. Yeah. Where he's set up in a really decent position, I would say, and I get impatient because, and I get chaotic in my mind. I'm like, oh, he's attacking me. I have to do something. So I try and engage him, and it never pans out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, like, the, the fact that you're dropping right now is amazing. Like, see how with that, that's, I recommended it, and see how open this is? Like, you're actually doing more damage to him than he's doing to you if you drop right now. Uh, so that was a great decision by you. And as long as you don't just get overly anxious here and just shove into that, you're going to be okay. Because this is going to start making him anxious because you're actually doing more damage to him than he's doing to you. So one way you could also break this, another way you can react to this, is if you see your opponent's going for a Viking cloud like that, you could genuinely make like two starports, like one right there and one like right there. And then as soon as they're done... Lift off these two uh, barracks with reactors and land them somewhere else and make two new reactors on the racks and immediately put two reactors on two starports and now have three reactor starport making six Vikings at a time. You could do something like that too to like quickly retake air control. And suddenly now you're the one who can kill his Vikings and now you can actually shove him back with your tanks while you're killing his command centers and he can't scan. Now no longer does he have air control, but he also can't scan because you're killing his fucking CCs with your bio drop. Yeah, make sure you stim pack that army. This is a really good attack. You're definitely not stimming though. No. There we go. It was late. You still won the fight. Still great overall. Now you're going for a flank. This flank no longer makes sense. It does not make sense now. The only reason why it doesn't make sense is because it would only make sense to break this the way I like was saying, carpet drop the marines or do a, a flank or do something like that. It would make sense if this was your whole army. If like you were gonna like take everything you had and just pile onto him and try to break him all at once. But you're already at a weaker position now because you're investing a lot of supply into going somewhere else. Uh you've already you have lost some of it and you've replaced some of it, so that's making it a little less bad for you. But it, it's I don't know, it's one of those things that like you want to have all your power to push it back all at once. It's not that bad. Like it's it's, it's not as extreme, though, because you literally only have 4 plus uh, 8 supply here. So you have 12 supply over here, and that's it. So that's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah. It's still kind of scary, though, because like you're pushing into a siege line if you do it. Base is under attack. Okay, now this is a problem, though. Yeah. You're doing it without bringing your tanks. So you're, once again, you're putting all the pressure on the Marines. So, if the, so, if I were to do this same push but bring my tanks, would it make more sense to keep the tanks unseaged to come in, no. or to just pull them a little further? Nope. Further? What you want to do is think about like I'll I'll use this. Okay, well I was gonna give you a number scale, but like I'll just give you a we have a visual, so it's fine. Think about the fact that right now this Terran controls like this area, that whole green box with his tanks and you control this area with your tanks and what happens is is you guys have overlapping areas that are controlling and neither one of you can like pass the edge of the uh, each other's line without taking a lot of losses right right so what you could do is if you unseaged all your tanks and you a move in 
with your the, the flank would be nice if you set that up like you did. Uh, but the tanks of him are gonna shoot whatever comes in first. They're not gonna target fire your tanks. They're gonna shoot the closest hostile thing that ha happens to be there. So they're gonna shoot at the Marines. Now your Marines are gonna engage and shove in. And what you could do is you could siege your, like your Marines are going in and you could siege your tanks like right there, which will give you control over that area. So as your Marines trade and die, your tanks clear everything else out that's left over in this area. And now suddenly you control this whole area with your tanks right there now. So you basically shove your area of control into his fucking face and take it over. But then you can't control anything that's back here. But the crazy part about it is, is he has no tanks back there, so you actually could win the fight. This actually isn't that yeah. many tanks. Like, you could totally break this. Um, like, there's only four tanks here. Or there's actually five. There's that fifth tank that wasn't being selected. But there's only five tanks, and you actually have six tanks, and you have a lot of bio. So, theoretically, you actually could control this area. Uh... And then two of these tanks in the back aren't even being covered by his marines. So these two tanks are actually going to die super fast to that flank. Um, but if you don't bring your tanks, what's going to probably happen is your bio is going to do a lot of damage. And then it's all going to die. And then he's going to have leftover bio. And you're still going to control this area that you controlled before. But there's going to be more stuff for him left over to where he still controls this area. But... There's not enough tanks for him right now to make me say that he'll kill all your Marines and then shove your tanks and kill you afterwards. I don't think that's going to happen. I just would say that your Marines are going to die and you're not going to kill a whole army and you're going to be able to zone this area. But it does open up a situation, though, where if all your Marines die, he could load up his medevacs and, like, drop your base now. I would say that would be a, a thing that could happen for real. And you, you only have tanks that control this area and he might still control the ramp because his tanks might not die in the front. So... Your tanks can't defend that now. You'd have to wait for, like, new units to spawn to defend that. So I fully expect all your Marines to die. And they do. And he lost... Uh, two out of his five tanks. And one of them almost died as well. That one almost died. So... Now... Again, he has a lot of Marines left over. You have, like, none. He still has medevacs. He still has a couple Vikings. Uh, this guy, like I said, he could drop you now. Oh, shit. He could drop you now if he wanted to. Uh, doesn't have to, but he could. Uh, but yeah. And now you you actually you know, did a lot of damage with your drop over here. But overall, you took a worse trade overall there because you lost a lot more army. So the game will it could go on right now. It could. Because, again, if this guy pushes you into your tanks, I don't think he's going to be able to break you. Uh, especially if you're still making units and you're going to reinforce and defend those tanks with these units. I think you would live. So if you... I don't know. You, the game's about to be over, so I don't know if you quit right here. Oh, you unsiege! You unsiege! No, that's not time to unsiege. Now. If you push with your tanks now, you're going to throw the game. This is how you throw the game. Okay. Okay, now he does the drop like we said. You could totally have defended this with new bio. Like, new units coming out could defend this. Easy. Your tanks are covering the ramp as well. You ran all these bio down the ramp, which got shot by a tank, and now they're running up back up the ramp and getting shot by a tank again. And you're still running pretty close to that tank, so they're getting shot by the tank still. You have more Marines coming out. Okay, stop target firing as well. You just target fired, uh, what was it, a medevac, I think? Yeah, you target fired that medevac. And your Marines all ran in to do it, and you're just getting shot by all of his Marines while you do that. You have, you, so medevacs are nice, right? Medevacs are good. But there comes a time and a place where you need to, like, realize that your bio DPS is going to be worth more if you just pick off units instead of like something that's in the back like like a supporting unit and just diving for it because you're going to lose more than it's worth to kill that and then after that's over you still probably will lose the fight because you just lost too many marines in the process of trying to kill it but if like all these marines that were on the left side didn't run through the tank a couple times and then continue to stand in the tank right there 
and they grouped up with these guys in the bottom, 100% you could have won this fight by pushing him from the south side, like right there, and pushing him up and getting rid of him without even target firing medivacs. Another problem for is you? It, or go, oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, I, sorry, I don't mean to... Is it ever acceptable to target fire a medivac? Because I was panicked he was going to pick him up and run out. That's why I did it. It's honestly fine if he picks up if he picks him up and runs out. It's not that big of a deal, because you still control the area. Uh, so that's okay. that would that would be fine because you don't want to chase him when he runs out because he's got tanks up there. And you don't know yeah. everything about how many shots you're going to take in the face. But as long as you get him off the base and you save the base and you don't lose all your SCVs, that's all that really matters here. Get, like, the thought of killing his medivacs is greedy to then make sure he can't leave to then kill his marines. Because think about it like this. If he does have tanks up there, and you dive for the medevacs first, let's just say this guy can't fly out of your base, but what if he runs right there? And his tanks can reach, like, right there. So, you'd be running into tanks anyways to try to kill the marines. So, it's okay. it's definitely not, I would say, definitely not the right call to just get greedy with it, dive for the medevacs, because when you do that, you're, like, marines kill marines super fast, and you're just getting, sh you're, you're taking, like, probably like two seconds to kill the medevac and you have like 16 marines shooting you about twice to almost three times a second and you have 16 of them so you're getting shot like 40-ish times because it's not exactly three times a second but you're getting shot like roughly like almost 40 times by 16 marines and the time it takes you to kill two medevacs and 40 shots worth of marines on marines will probably mean you lose like five or six marines right there so that's going to definitely, like, thin your army out to kill a medevac. And you don't have a lot to begin with, so you're, you're already, like, down in Marines here. And then you lose the fight because of it. So, yeah. Uh, hmm. That push you did here, everything we said that I, that I was assuming was going to happen fucking happened, right? And it's... It's just because you got impatient, and all you got to realize is that uh, tank control is massive. It really is. So when your opponent has it, or when you have it, you have options to try and get rid of it, like we talked about. Like, you could have SCV pulled it and just dove it. Like, if you would have unseized your tanks, dove in with SCVs and Marines on stim, and then got close with your tanks and sieged them up to finish off the rest, you probably would have broke this. And you, you lost oh, SCVs yeah. anyways with the way you decided to do it this game. You would have lost SCVs either way. Month but if you would have had like five command centers replacing SCVs, you could have been fine and replaced those quickly. But then his whole army would have died and a lot of your army would still be alive. Because you would have killed a lot of his army in the time it took him to kill your SCVs. So you would have taken a great trade there instead. Not saying that's the only way to deal with it. But it's an option that could have been a good option because again... You have to realize, compositionally, his army is better than yours when the fight gets drawn out. Because, again, he has Viking and you don't. So his tanks are way more effective than yours then. Okay. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I, the, the big thing you're doing that's not great is you keep just stim pack, like you keep just diving your Marines in by themselves and disregarding your tanks. You definitely need to bring okay. your tanks, always. Uh, okay. The only time you should ever not bring your tanks is... If, like, here was more acceptable, if he's not already sieged, you poke him and then pull back before you get shot by tanks. Not diving in until he actually shoots you with tanks, and as you run away, he's just drilling your fucking marines as you run away. Like, definitely a pull back before you're going to get shot, and if he chases you into your sieged tanks, and you drill him as he comes in, that's totally fine. But you definitely pushed the envelope way too hard there earlier in the game. You, like, waited way too long to get out. But if but here when he's already sieged, that concept goes away. You can't do that. Because you're gonna run in and get shot by tanks before you pull him back. Gotcha. Okay. Uh so yeah, but yeah, like I said, you would have broke him though if you would have unseized your tanks, pushed with all your marines, sieged your tanks, not like don't don't just like siege like there. Siege like there. Like unsiege them there and re siege here. That way you control instead of controlling up to here, you control up to here, like this area, and all the tanks in the area that he has tanks get pounded and killed, and now you control your ramp and area on the front a little bit more, and now you take control of being able to rally up and down your ramp without getting shot repeatedly. Like, that would have been great. 
And it would have been super easy for you to run back and forth and defend your base if he doesn't drop anyways. And also the th other thing too is, in that fight, you would have killed more Marines because you would have gotten tank shots off during that fight too. And he would have had to have backed up from you controlling this area because you actually did have a lot of units here. And it, I'm not going to say you would have killed his entire army, but you would have been able to control the area. Yeah. Okay. But overall, like I said before, those are all ways to make this build better. It really is. But you are doing a build that is, like we said in the very beginning, you're doing a build that is focused on disrupting your opponent as opposed to focusing on yourself, which is harder. So the only way that your build really will not feel like you're in positions like this, where you're like, fuck, I'm behind, and this is weird, I feel awkward, this is anxious, is if you do more damage with Reaper Hellion. Reaper Hellion doing nothing this game made this game feel like you were always losing battles. Right. Because he's focusing on economy and you're not stopping that. And then he just has more shit. Okay. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Um, thought I had a question about that, but I guess I don't. Uh, do you have any questions about anything in general? Um, is it, I mean, you kind of touched on it earlier. I just want to make sure I understand properly when it comes to TVT specifically and doing medevacs, unless from what I understand, from what I gather, it is unless I'm doing many drops or at least uh -huh. often times doing drops, it's more beneficial to have Vikings instead, just in general. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. If you're going to, if you're not going to drop and you're going to do frontal pushes, it makes more sense to have Viking as a primary air unit for yourself over medevac because it increases the power of your tank push dramatically. And the medevac is not ever going to run out of energy because it will never heal the entire HP bar of a Marine because before it can even attempt to heal the entire HP bar of a Marine, it's dead in tank versus tank. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it'll only um, it'll it, yeah, sorry it'll it'll only heal like the like the stim pack damage of the marines that don't get shot by tanks, which is barely gonna touch the medevac's energy bar. Sorry, now you say what you're gonna say. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> fine. I was actually sort of moving to a different one. Um, and the the only reason earlier around six thirty, I did that move out, and I know it. I, I realize now that's bad because I don't know why I'm doing that move out. Mm -hmm. I was, I was under the assumption that I'm just trying to do it for map control. Is that a reason, even if I don't know if he has a third down, is that enough reason to have that sort of push out with just Marine Tank or no? It depends how much damage you do with the Reaper Hellion. If, gotcha. if you do a lot of damage with Reaper Hellion and he never takes a third base, you could still do it for map control because you're setting him behind. So, like, you can, you can justify that your investment of your third puts you behind in a military stance early on in the game because you're investing into economy, which develops military later. So you're like, I got economy now, which means military comes later, but I killed your economy as well, which can now make up the difference of the fact that even though I invested into economy and you didn't, we're still about even in military right now because you slowed him down. It would be okay then for you to push like that and try to be like controlling the area and like shoving him a little bit and trying to make him like run into tanks and stuff and like poking him with ravens. That would be okay. But if you didn't do any damage to his economy at all, and you're behind because, again, you have to feel like you're behind. If your opponent opened up economically and you didn't, and you didn't stop that at all, you're definitely behind going forward because you're going to be at a slower pacing than he is. And that is not the time to then push like three minutes later or four minutes later and be like, okay, let's see if this works. Because what's going to happen is he's just going to have like 15, 20 more supply than you and he could run your ass over. Gotcha. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah, um, Reaper Hellion definitely has a big impact on, like, the follow-up of what happens if you do this build. Sure, sure. Um, I don't know how much more, how many more questions I have that I can think of. You're all good. Um, I mean, I could, I could just generalize some stuff to you, too. If you, I mean, you don't have to think of questions. It's all good. Sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you got more to say, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, I, I can talk about StarCraft all day uh, for a week. 
uh, I would say this, okay? This should be your goal, all right? This should be, like, this should be your, your syllabus for yourself on, like, improving at the game. Like, your homework, I guess, for, like, for the future for yourself. First things first, really work on perfecting your first attack, okay? Like, don't really put... Like, tr tr try to play the whole game, although, like, like you did this game or whatever. Try to, like, play it out throughout the game. But try to make sure there's a lot of emphasis emphasis that you put on yourself in the first seven minutes of the game that dictates, did you do a good job keeping up your macro element of your build while poking him? And really, really, really try to fixate on what I said earlier, where it's like a macro-heavy focus or a micro-heavy focus. And micro-heavy focuses as well are really brief, by the way. They're always like 10 seconds or 15 seconds or 5 seconds. They're short. They're not ever supposed to be like two minutes long. Um, because if they are two minutes long, there usually is going to be a break between them when you shift from one location to the other. Because that's the only reason why it would ever be that long. It's because you're like running him around his base or something like that. So whenever you shift locations and you're in the process of just move commanding and you're not actually trying to like micro stuff and target fire stuff or whatever, that's definitely a macro moment that you can have. And really try to like be super efficient about not wasting any time at all in the early game because the worst thing in the world you can do is get behind for no reason because you're just not building shit when you should be and you're like oh fuck i'm eight seconds behind on that and nine seconds behind on that and seven seconds behind there and then five minutes goes by and you're like well overall i'm 47 seconds behind now like you don't want that to happen uh so that's step number one i would say you really need to work on and really try to make a lot of effort if you like analyze your own replays really watch the first like five to seven minutes of the game like really look at it and then try to make yourself a checkpoint like a quota where by like seven minutes in the game you actually have a well saturated third base if you can do that with this build you're doing a great job um and this i'm, sorry, I'm just taking notes so oh you, sure you said right. um uh well saturated third by seven minutes is that yeah, what you said yeah and the way this is going to happen, the, the only way that that will ever happen is if you do a good job not wasting time on uh, production of buildings and not doing things like supply blocking yourself while you're trying to attack somebody and uh, basically not just missing beats macro-wise. But a bit, another big one that you need to not miss is mule drops. You need to not be like, ah, oh, fuck, I have 142 energy there. Whoops, I forgot about that one for a while. It needs to be dropped like within the first like 60 energy of getting a mule. So like 50 is a mule. And if you drop it within like 10 energy beyond it, like that means you're dropping a mule within like 10 to 15 seconds after it's ready to go. That's pretty good. But if you drop a mule, when you have like two or three mules worth of energy, that whole fucking mule is missed now. And you missed out on that like 250 minerals or so that you could have had otherwise from that point, point A to point B. Cause you know how like if you drop a mule perfectly, you're never going to be like having like four mules on a mineral line. You're going to have like one and maybe two for a few seconds and then one will die. And then you're going to have one again for a long time and then maybe two again for a few seconds and then the first one will once again die because it expires. If you're doing mules like that, you're doing great. And also try your best as well to drop mules on close patches. Actively drop them on a patch that's closer to the command center because it gives okay. you more money. Uh, it has shorter turn in routes. Um, so go out of your way to like actually do that uh, instead of just dropping it randomly and being like far patches uh, and if you do that you'll hitting the seven minute like well saturated third base timing is going to feel like once you get it you're going to be like wow I have a lot of fucking money so definitely you can still poke your opponent and try to be annoying and be aggressive and stuff but definitely try to not fuck your own build up and focus on really trying to make your own build be effective while being annoying to him as well it's really hard to do that but if, that would be great if you could and then uh, behind that, after you feel like you kind of consistently get that down, if you do consistently get that down, by the way, you're not going to be in platinum anymore. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be in diamond guaranteed if you can do that. Uh, and then once you get to that point, really try to maintain that and only even make it better. Like try to keep getting better with it as you do more attacks. But once you get to diamond league, really start trying to maintain the really like the solid macro you're giving yourself while focusing more on being creative about how to attack your opponent. Like, do the things like I was saying, like, where you can, like, split your units off or poke him one way or poke him another way, run around more, kill more workers, 
try to be like more effective with knocking his economy out with like Hellion Reaper and shit like that. Um, and just being active with your units uh, while also macroing. So like what I'm saying is try to think of more ways you can micro your situation. That's not just going to be like an A move and it, like straight up into his face. And then really be more careful too with your Marine tank and the Marine tank phase. Like you can definitely, if you macro, like I said, and you can get to like that seven minute mark doing a really good job, you will genuinely be able to like stim pack your Marines and win games, even though you're not even using your tanks in Platinum League and be like, wait, what? Is this what you're supposed to do? It's working, but it's not working because it's the right way to micro. It's working because you're out macroing your opponent. I guarantee that's what it will be, what it is. Like it's what it will be like if that wins games for you. Because as soon as you play against people who actually micro properly and macro properly, if you move Marines like that, you're going to lose every fucking time. And you're like, oh, okay, well, this is not clearly not good anymore. <laughs> so definitely make sure you're utilizing your tanks more once you uh, get comfortable with everything else. Uh, like, I, I'm totally fine as well. You can do it right now. Once you're in the Marine tank phase, definitely start using your tanks more. So only ever siege your tanks if your intention is to pull him either into them or deeper behind them. That's only where you should siege your tanks. If you want to shove into him, do not siege your tanks until that's the location you want to control. Okay? So never siege your tanks and then think to yourself, I'm now going to shove forward out right, like beyond them. You always have the intention of the moment you siege your tanks, the range of the tank is now where you want to pull him into and always that's where you guard. So you're you're literally forfeiting every bit of area beyond that siege line and you're okay with that. The only time you should ever siege or sorry, the only time you should ever stim and just dive it down is if it's a very clear, obvious advantage where you go, yeah, like if it was like that was his army and you have like 40 Marines, sure, go for it. Like that's not going to stop you. But if he's got an army that's just as big as you, do not fucking just dive away from your tanks ever. That's, that's YOLO and you're going to lose almost every time. Okay. Got it. Um, I actually do have one last question, I suppose. Sure, yeah, go for it. Um... What are your what are your thoughts on F two? Ever since it was implemented in the game, I grew a nasty habit of using it very very like a lot. <laughs> um, would it be better to unbind that and sort of go back to Wings of Liberty, where you have to manually, um, you know, group your army? Uh, Does that make sense? Or is yeah, it, no, that makes what sense. What do you think? Uh, I think F two is okay, uh, especially for learning the game because it makes things go faster, uh, so you have more time to like macro. And once you get faster at macro, you'll feel like you have a lot of time to actually micro. Uh, so you won't really need it as much. You won't feel like it's as much of a crutch that you need. But one thing about F2 that's also really nice is it's really nice at organizing your army. So for instance, you could do things like select an army and then you could, uh, let's say you're, you select an army and let's just pretend the SUVs are Marines. Okay. You, let's say you wanted to go control, click your tanks and go control two, just, just because. And now all your tanks are now control two, and they could also be in control one or something like that. And now with control two, you could hit two and then you could like right click like targets you want to kill that are priorities or something like this. Let's say you want, there was Banelings coming at you from Zerg and you wanted to target the Banelings instead of Zerglings. And then it would be really easy to grab all your tanks because you bound them into a group by going select army and then hitting tanks on group two. Or let's say you want to do an alt steal command. Let's say you want to take your, uh, Let's say you have Liberators in your army, and you go select all army, control click my Liberators, hit Alt 3. And it's really easy to find where your Liberators are with a, tar with a control group rather than going Liberator, 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 as they're spread out around the map or something. So it's not a horrible hotkey to have, but just definitely don't try to be in the habit of never even binding control groups and going select all army, A move, select all army, A move, select all army, A move. You definitely want to use control groups if you're trying to progress your micro. Yeah. So and so, what I what I normally do is I have a reflex of doing F two shift one, or control one to bind it. Um, so if like if I'm on an attack or if I'm doing this or something like that, F two control one, and I just it, I reflex bind it like that. Yeah. Um, but it's that's good to know. I, I actually never thought about just F twoing, not binding it, and then control clicking to separate them. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, another way, another thing that would help a lot too. Uh, do you ever use camera hotkeys? Yes. Um, poorly, but yes. That's okay. Like, I would say the, the the baseline for, like, extremely good camera hockeys that are good forever 
it'll never be like, okay, this is not enough. It'll always be enough. Is if you have four camera keys. And the four camera keys that you could have would be main, natural third. Like, so you can see like the majority of your bases. Makes it really easy to like bounce between your core of your economy and defend yourself and would do what it set up things macro wise, whatever. But have a fourth hockey for a rally point. And then you could always hit the camera hockey for rally point and then green box and grab whatever you need. So let's just hypothetically say you're going to play a style that is really, really hyper aggressive and you want to do multiple front location attack. Okay. And let's say you're, you're making literally medevac marine tank. Let's just say that's what your army is. You can make medevac marine tank. And then you, let's say you have one army right now. That is half of your army. Okay. And you go, okay, green box control one off the rally point. Now you move it over here to the left and you go attack your opponent. While you're attacking your opponent over here, you're still making army. And let's say halfway through this fight over here, like you're stalemating the fight out and you have tanks like slowly crawling forward. And you go back to your camera hockey and you have a brand new army that's exactly the same as what you have over here. But now you have the same thing sitting here. Green box it, control two. And you go, hey, control two, let's go up here. Let's go north and let's go poke him from this side. So two is up here and one is down here. And it's the same exact army on one and two, like compositionally, but it's different sets of units. It's like it's it's like each side is 50 supply, which adds up to a total of 100. So you have like these guys down here pushing and you have these guys over here pushing. And let's say group one takes some fucking losses. And you're like, oh shit, he just tried to defend group one and group one got knocked down from 50 supply down to like 15 supply. And suddenly a whole lot of reinforcements come over here, which is the remaining 35 that's missing. Green box it. Shift one, group one's back to 50 supply again, and you aim move it all back over here to meet up again. Like, you could totally do stuff like that as well, and it makes it super easy to, like, micromanage your army because you have a control, uh, a camera hotkey for control groups, where you can just green box it and go, you go there, you go there, you go there, you go there. Yeah, and actually, the only, when I say, I guess I should have explained myself when I said poorly, the only camera hockey I use is actually the army one. Anytime I re-rally, whether it's from my natural into my third, wherever the rally point is, is where I set my one and only camera hockey. So I know I need to get better about doing natural third and fourth. So. Well, you, uh, don't, don't do fourth base. Just do, like, main natural third. Uh, oh, okay. Like, uh, you don't even, honestly, if you don't even use main natural third, it's not the end of the world. It's really nice to have it, in my opinion, because it makes it really easy to, like... For instance, if I'm here, okay, and I'm uh, attacking with a Reaper, and I'm like, okay, I want to build a depot in front of my natural wall. I can go natural hockey, grab an SCV, build a depot, double tap my Reaper. I'm back. Super quick. Yeah. Or if I'm like, you know what I want to do? I want to build gases at my third. I'm attacking here with the drop. Hit my camera hockey. Gas, gas. Double tap my drop. It's really fast. Same thing with the main. If I want to build NG bays, if I want to build depots, whatever. If I want to build add-ons, swap add-ons. It just makes it really efficient and fast, and it's guaranteed. Whereas if you're hitting the space bar, you could be like, okay, I want to go to my uh, my main and do something. Oh, fuck, that's my fourth. Ah, oh, fuck, that's my yep. third. Ah, oh, fuck, that's my expansion. Ah, oh, okay, that's my main. And then you're like, I'm doing it really fast. Ah, oh, fuck, that was my main. Now I'm back at my natural. Okay, let's just drag my goddamn mouse over there. <laughs> yeah. So it's not efficient to do that with like... Hitting spacebar, hoping you go to the right location, um, or whatever your base location, like your your base toggling camera is. Um, so yeah, I, th I that's why I really like uh, camera hockey. It makes it really efficient, and I think it. I also am a Zerg player mainly, and it is mostly a mandatory for Zerg because you have to inject your bases constantly, so you kind of need that. But with Terran, you don't need it as much. But with Terran, you definitely need a fucking rally point hockey for your your army. That is so mandatory. Okay. For like efficiency okay. going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, work with that. I actually saw your uh, your BDGM, your gold series, when you did camera hotkeys. You did your QWER, I don't know, or QWE at least. Yeah. I don't know if that's still your current It is. Ones. Yep, yep. Um, I looked into that and I saw how many it screwed up on like <laughs> the races Hockey, and yeah. how I'd have to remap. So I kind of got scared and ran away from it, but I'll have, maybe I'll just deal with it. And like, <laughs> it's honestly not uh, that bad. It it's it's not that bad. Uh, and it's you get I don't know if you set up hockeys, it takes genuinely probably like a couple weeks, and you get used to it, and then that's now your new thing. Like you just it's now your new like muscle memory norm, and you're fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's not it's not too bad. Like obviously you don't have to use my hockey setup exactly. You can use someone else's. Like you can use F keys if you wanted to. 
uh, stuff like that, and it would not fuck up any hotkeys otherwise. F4 is my actually one camera hotkey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I, I use I use F5, uh, F, uh, five, six, seven, and 8 to bind my four camera hotkeys, and then I use QWE to go to my main match all third, and then I use the side button on my mouse to go to my rally point hockey for my army. Oh, okay. And then that's all I do. Uh, so it's... Yeah, it's super easy peasy. It's I'm I it does, like it's I. It's not like you're not gonna have those hockeys bound to anything that get unbound. It's still gonna have hockeys for them. It's just a different button that you just gotta get used to. And once you're used to it, it's the same shit. Because uh, there's plenty of keys on the keyboard that it's not gonna be like, well, fuck. Well, guess what? The letter L is now gonna be one of your main hockeys. The letter P is gonna be one of your main hockeys. The letter M is gonna be one of your main hockeys. <laughs> like it's not gonna be like the right side of the keyboard. Like, you got a calculator pad because you need some more hockeys. <laughs> <laughs> be like uh, War, where the Marine key is actually M. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, right? Like, here's an, here's an example of things I did with Terran, okay? Is your lift command and land command L for real? It is. You know what I bound mine to? Bound it to fucking Z. Oh. Does, I, Z doesn't even do anything in Terran. Exactly, does it? it does not. Oh, okay. and you know how much easier it is to fucking talk like lift and land buildings when you didn't need to do a really quick reaper attack add-on swap go back to your reaper hit fucking Z on your keyboard because you can do it without looking at your keyboard and if you gotta hit L you gotta like swipe your fingers across the keyboard and be like where the fuck is L there it is <laughs> yeah I do that a lot actually. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like my, mine is, mine is fucking Z and you gotta bind it to lift and land by the way uh, if you want to do that so and I totally uh, did okay. I was like this is fucking great and here's another one. Is your planetary fortress P? You bet it is. You know what mine is? It's fucking R. I bound all my keys on the right side to the left side of the keyboard. There's nothing a command center does that is R. R? Well, okay. Yeah, not in command. No, you're right. Okay. Yeah, okay. That is smart. Because you, like, you could say, oh, rally point. But like, do you ever hit R and click something? Like left click it and you right click it. You always just go right-click mineral line or right-click gas. Yeah, I was gonna say the like R like for Reaper or repair. Well, that, that, that doesn't. Do yeah, thing, exactly. So. That's that's off of a barracks and that's off of a, a SCV. That's why you can have duplicate hotkeys because like if I have S as SCV, it doesn't mean that I can't use stop anymore on a unit because oh. S is not like if I go Marine S and he's like I can't fucking make SCVs. What are you telling me to do? I'm not a command center. It's not going to do that. He's going to stop. So it's like different uh, hotkeys can be applied to different units and different command cards. You just can't have the, you can't have a command center have S for stop and or rather sorry, you can't have a command center say S is like drop mule and make a CV. Like cuz it's the same command card. But if you have a different command card, which is like a different building or like a factory and a barracks can have A for marine and hellion. That can totally work. But you can't have a barracks say make marine and marauder both a, right? So it th that works. That's why it's so easy to make duplicate hockeys for different buildings. That's why I have like one of the hockeys I use for a fuckload of stuff is R and V and Z and S and D. Like all these keys on like the left side, right under one, two, three, four. They're all duplicate, like all over the place. I didn't even think about doing that. Yeah, the, I, I, the only one I've, I, that I can remember that I've truly remapped was years ago, was Q, because um, and the only reason is because I was watching a dude's V to uh, Bronze to Master series back in Wings of Liberty, and he bound it to Q for his patrol. So anytime like I have an SCV or something like that, I try to, I, I try to not have any you know idle workers even if they're just patrolling. Yeah. So that's the only reason I did that one. Yeah, you can mess around with it, man. Like remapping hockeys can definitely make your life a lot easier, and. Uh... Like, one of the big ones for Terran, uh, seriously, at the very least, rebind your fucking lift and land on your buildings. Because you do it every game. And it's the biggest pain in the ass when you got to do it with L. Like, L is fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, Z is perfect. Z is so, like, Z is 100% efficiency. Don't even look at the keyboard. You always hit it right. Yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah, I look down. I got to make sure. Yeah, no, I, I get it. <laughs> Yep, and uh, yeah, it just makes your life really easy. That's why a lot of players like Grid, because it makes everything on the left side of the keyboard. And I'm not, I don't use, I don't like, like, Grid's fine. I don't like it, like, a lot enough to use it. But I did make my hotkey setup similar to Grid, because I did also make everything on my keyboard, or everything in my hotkeys on the left side of my keyboard. So it right. definitely makes it a lot easier. Okay. Well, 
hey man i want to be respectful of your time i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this so thank yeah, you yeah no much. no worries it's really dude. helpful yeah and uh yeah i hope it helps and i will i've, I've recorded it all so because i'm streaming and everything so uh i'll by like tomorrow i'll send you a message in discord and it'll just be the vod of what this just was so you can watch this as many times as you want and if you're like, fuck, okay, that was a good lesson. But like, let's say three hours from now, you're like, what the fuck did he say though? I remember like two things and we talked for two hours. You can yeah. go back and watch it again. And everything I said is right there. And you can watch it as many times as you want. Awesome. All right, man. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you. And have a good rest of your night. Thanks for doing it. And yeah, uh, good luck. And let me know how it goes. Uh, if, hopefully like a month from now, you're like, vibe, I'm diamond. And not just diamond three. I'm almost diamond one. I'm getting ready to go <laughs> masters. That's that's what I'm hoping for. So. Yeah, that'd be sick. Uh, I always love hearing people's like success stories after like stuff like this. So definitely let me know how it goes. And yeah, I wish you the best of luck, man. I will. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Have a good one. All right, you too. Take it easy. See ya. See ya. All right, guys. That has been a coaching lesson with Zebula. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this is a platinum level lesson. Uh, that's basically preparing him to go into diamond and masters he definitely likes to do more of a micro focus so we did a micro focused uh lesson there so i hope you guys enjoyed it hope this helps any other terrans out there learn how to maybe be more effective with styles like this and uh yeah good luck in your own games as well guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video so until then take it easy much love and peace out everybody later